slash M-E-N. How's it going, everybody, and welcome to Shin Megami Tensei Network Link 321. I feel like I've ever sounded less confident saying an episode number for this show, which I think I've actually said that as an opening before, so I probably shouldn't say that. But I'm your very uncertain host, Spencer Presley. Joining me this week are two special guests. We're practically mm-hmm. bursting at the seams uh, in the imaginary SMTN studios. My first guest is an illustrious, illustrious Xbox fanboy, uh, Ozzy. I love the Xbox! <laughs> that should be your fucking, like... <laughs> that should be, like, your, your sign-off. <laughs> He's fucking... Dude, he, bought, he bought a whip and a hat just for the direct this week. He can't wait to hear about Indiana Jones and the circle jerk of fame. <laughs> I love Xbox so much, I have an Xbox controller on a pedestal in my room and still don't own a console. You yeah. literally, like, the way you said that, I, I'm having so much, like, trouble just processing, just because, like, the way you said that was, like, it's your sign-off every week. <laughs> it, it really fucked with me. I wasn't, I wasn't happy with that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, also joining me is someone who may or may not have spent at least 9,000 hours in Smash Brothers Ultimate just in 2023 alone. Senorish, yeah. how are you doing? I'm good. I didn't play Smash Ultimate much last year, but yeah, it's what a good was game. Your, what was your, like, when you were looking at your end-of-the-year wrap-up on your Switch, did you go, oof, that's too much? Um... Uh, cause I didn't use my Switch that much last year. Uh, cause like the main game I actually played and beat uh, on Switch uh, was Pikmin Four, um, and, and Mario Wonder. Um, but yeah, like I like I basically only booted up my Switch for those and Tactica. I feel so bad that like 2023 was supposed to be the year of me getting into Pikmin. Mm-hmm. I. I got I was eating up that demo of Pikmin 4. Good I was game. like I was like holy shit and they're releasing 1 and 2 physically. I could finally pick up Pikmin 3. I was like dang dude, this is the year. I'm going to get into Pikmin. Never picked up any of them. Uh new <laughs> Mario comes out, can't wait. Never even bought. Ne- I bought neither of them. Wow. I didn't even I wow. didn't even pick up Mario RPG. E. Really That's disappointed. Game. I, well, yeah. Dude, like, literally, I was telling this to, uh, I forget who I said this to, but I, I had to cut down on, like, my spending in, like, my games in general so much. The last new game I bought, I don't count Persona 3 Portable just because that was, like, more of, like, a limited collector's thing. Mm. Uh, the last game I bought that's, like, a brand new regular ass game was fucking Tactica. Mm-hmm. Huh. So let let that be uh let that be uh, something in terms of that that's what the power of GameStop coasters did for me. They got me to open my wallet up. It's like <laughs> sorry sorry Pikmin Four. I've got to I've got to play a uh, chibi tactical game. But uh yeah we have not had you guys on in the podcast in a very long time. We're gonna be here talking about Atlas 2024 predictions. But first, what the heck have you guys been up to? What kind of videos you've been making? What kind of uh, illicit activities have you been getting onto online? Like, who wants to go first? Work. Yeah. It's been a lot of work stuff. I mean, in general, like, we do have a video that we have, me and you, Michelle, together, have recorded together. Yep. Um, oh, thanks. That I still <laughs> that I still have not uploaded yet. I, I was going to say, wasn't there, and... like, a video, like, you guys, like, finished months ago that you were, like, any day now putting out... The two of us ranking so, fucking Mario Kart drift sounds. So, so it was never, it was never something we finished. We just kept saying because it's what people know we're going to do was doing the Tactica discussion. But I just took forever to finish that game. Uh, yeah. Of me. Uh, so that it, it just took a while. Uh, but we did record it like a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah, at this so, point. 
And now I'm like, man, I can't, like, that entire time I was like, man, I can't wait to edit this. It'll be super quick. And now I have, like, other editing responsibilities. So I'm like, <sighs> yeah, I'll get to it. Um, But it is done. It's, like, four and a half hours long just talking about Tactica. It's was this, ridiculous. like, post-beating it at least? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I, I'm in a weird, like, little predicament with that. Like, I'm kind of curious what you guys think. Also, if anyone can hear, like, I doubt you guys could hear. The, can you hear, like, a siren on my end at all? I do not. Are you, so, are like, you like, is your house on fire? No, that's what I thought. I was like, it sounds like a, I'm on fire right now. And I opened it up, and I was like. <laughs> you are on I was fire. Like, I, but I was, like, looking at my window. I was like, where the fuck am I? And I looked, <laughs> looked, and someone pulled the fire alarm at my apartment complex's gym. Mind oh. you, the gym has been closed for a week, and it's fucking negative three outside where I live right now. <laughs> So they just got I don't, really cold and needed to warm up. You can't blame yeah. them. <laughs> Fucking yes, I guess. Um, but yeah, it, it, like, oh my god, yeah. So please, uh, please post that video sometime soon because, like, I'm in a similar situation where, like, I was thinking of like what I'm gonna do, or I guess like not really like what I'm gonna do, but I, I'm kind of curious where you guys are at because you'll be a good sort of like pace of like kind of both sides for this. So. In a rare feat, because some, because we were talking about this in one of our group chats today, um, of like Persona 3 reload codes going out, and I'm like, mm-hmm. honestly, I didn't have time to really review P5T early. It would have been nice to have it early. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, I didn't really have any time, and honestly, there were so many games and other things going on. I feel like, no offense, like that game, especially like interest wise and other things. I don't think it would have either helped or hindered my channel at all in terms of covering it. If anything, now it's just going to have more people interested because now more people have checked out the game because it's been so cheap. Plug, 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 buy this game, everybody. Um, But like what's weird about it is like so now we're like a little over but a little over two weeks, but under three weeks away from reload. And Mm. I'm like, okay, now like. The race is on. I want to finish my playthrough, finish the DLC, because I still haven't finished my first playthrough of like, I want to at least finish a review. I would like to do a spoiler cast, but also I, I, I'm i like not that much in a hurry for it. So it would kind of depend on like how much more time I have ahead of it for that. But it, it's in this weird case of I want to get it out before Persona 3. And it would kind of work with it. But I always am like kind of curious, like f- for when you both are looking up videos just to watch on your own or just thinking of videos to make in general, it, do you guys ever like feel, OK, is this too late? Is this kind of uh, like has this sat too long? Did I make did I make the right decision making a Persona 1 review take actual 20 years? Like what what do you guys <laughs> ever like think about stuff like that? Um, I mean, I definitely feel like. I mean, I, 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 me and Adam, I think, are both aware of this. Is the fact that like, our, no one's watching our tactics discussion. That's a video for us. Yeah. Um. It, yeah, yeah. Like, no, no one's doing that now. It's too long. It's too niche. At that point, it was like, I was like, yeah, Michelle, if you can finish like this game within the next like three days of me beating it, which I also took a little longer than I had wanted to, if I wanted to get a mm. video out. I was like, that should be fine, and we can get this discussion out. After it was like, nah, we're gonna take our time with this. I'm like. We're approaching January. It's going to be there when it's going to be there. We don't have to stress, like, shortening the conversation or whatever content we yeah. do. Let's just go in. Yeah, it's my thing. I, I, I talk about it a bit in the video. Um, Like, I burn out pretty fast on tactics games. I like them, but I just burn out pretty fast on them. I don't. Uh, so a lot of the time what happened to me as well, because, like, I have a I have a job uh, finally. So, like... I would just get home from a long shift at work and I'm like, I don't want to play a game that specifically requires like thought and tactic tactics. I'm going to tactic put on. Stuff. Yeah. I'm going to put on something stupid uh, or like just watch anime. See, I get that. I think that's also another reason why outside of feeling guilty, I played way too much pirate warriors one because I can sit down it's comfort food. I already know the story. I don't really have to think that hard. I can just mash away, have fun. It's still new to me, but also, yeah, it's that thing of like, especially recently with how crazy my job's been, and I'm sure yours has as well, is like, okay, um, 
P5T, I love a fun tactical game, but there is that thing of just, I want to, I want to not think, I don't want to have a wall push me against the fun I'm going to have. And there is like fun of getting against that. But I think like a big thing too, is like where I left off, I left off on a really hard side mission. And some of those are really tricky. And there are like things in my brain where I was like, I know what to do. I just don't want to sit here and have to try and figure it out. Ironically, the more I've like walked away from Tactica, I've been like, man, it it's really fun to play, and I'm really glad I got it on PS5. I guarantee you I would have beaten it if I bought it on Switch, which is so wild because I'm normally not that guy. Mm-hmm. See, I'm in the minority because I beat that game in a week. Like. <laughs> Like I was, I, I was not even in a good headspace at the time when that happened. And I was still like, man, this game's peak. I'm in. So yeah, like in a week, I was already done and out of it, and I was like, I was set. So I don't know, like for me, tactics games, I just thrive on that. So even at the beginning of the year, I was like, man, I'm tired. Like I don't know if I want to play a game right now. But I guess you know, I was like at an airport. I'm like, I guess Fire Emblem Engage just dropped. Sure, I'll play that. And like. Not even expecting to super love this game. Within like a couple weeks, I was like, "Yeah, eighty hour playthrough. I adore this game. I'm done." Like, mm-hmm. crazy. So yeah, I'm very different there. Somebody get this man a copy of Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope for God's sakes. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been telling Adam like if he likes Tactica, he should play the Mario and Rabbids games. I did play the first one a little bit, but like, not even because it was bad. I just it was the funny thing of I fell off it just because I'm like. It's not 2017 anymore. <laughs> no, dude. It holds, it, dude, world? the first game holds up. It's really slow in the beginning, but like, yeah. especially two. If one didn't get its hooks in you, I think there's a demo for it. I'll double check, but like, two is incredibly good. Like, compared to yeah. the first game, it's a way better game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're both. I, I love them both. Or, well, if I say that, I haven't played the second one. Um,. I don't Big know, Grant fan Kirk, of Mario and Rabbids too yep. excited to play it for the first time. <laughs> and I, I, I have a t- I have a connection to Kingdom Battle just because it was my first Switch game. Um, mm. but I don't know. Grant Kirkhope did the soundtrack. It's great. Uh, my first Switch game was Super Bomberman R. Yeah, it sure was, wasn't it? <laughs> I wouldn't uh, say I have an attachment to it. It's just my my <laughs> first Switch game was all of the physical games, which I always remember as just because when the Switch came out, I was really getting big into my collecting era, especially with like uh, Vita stuff. So I was expecting the Vita, I mean, the Switch to be like my next Vita. I'm like, I'm going to buy every physical Switch game. <laughs> How hard could it be? I stopped that after like three months because that was a fucking nightmare idea. I'm, I don't know why yeah. anyone wants to full set. But at launch, I, I got to play obviously Zelda, which was peak. Mm hmm. Uh, Bomberman, which was fine. Uh, one, two switch, which was always fun at parties and still is. And one day I'll pick up everybody one, two switch, but like, I, I'm just <laughs> in no hurry to, but then the other two that I o- always make me laugh is just dance got me back into just dance. Cause I was like, Oh man, I just kind of forgot. Just dance is pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then a, a copy. I'm so glad I bought. Did you guys know that the copy of Skylanders imaginators on oh. switch is like one of the most expensive games. That sounds right. <laughs> it's it's insane. Like, and I have like w- with the complete copy and everything with it. So like, it's just so funny. Of like, I bought that on a whim of just being like, I don't even like Skylanders, but I was like, it's an interesting enough port because it was the only version of Skylanders you could play without the portal. It let you use the NFC chip. That is yeah. that is a funny thing to think about for me. Is like. You know, I'm always like, yeah, when did, like, Toys to Life start and end? Like, what's the timeline of that? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it it began and was birthed at the beginning of the Wii U's release and died when the Wii U died. <laughs> it was just that entire era was just Toys to Life everywhere, and it did not – it started maybe just before the Wii U and died very <laughs> slightly after. I'm so sorry. I have a little update for all no one who cares. The fire alarm was definitely pulled because there's now a giant fire truck in front of my apartment. Oh my <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, I have like an update in an hour. I'll be like, the flames have reached the parking lot. They're creeping towards the house as we speak. <laughs> we'll, just be, we'll just be live casting this like the fucking Hindenburg. <laughs> nice. Um, they want me no. to leave, but I have to finish the podcast. <laughs> I would gladly die recording this show. What a baller way to go. I go awesome. <laughs> It'll be like, he died doing what he loves, making zero dollars an hour on the internet. <laughs> Yippee! Uh, um, but no, two updates. 
there is a Sparks of Hope demo. Okay. Uh, which does transfer progress to the full game. And okay. then also, reminder, Grant Kirkhope did the soundtrack to the first game. The second game was actually done by Grant Kirkhope, Gareth Coker, Christopher Harrell, and Yoko Shimamura. Oh, and me. Oh, yeah, and Ozzy, I think, did some, like, tambourine noises in the background. <laughs> Just did some white beatboxing. <laughs> you were, you know, I always do refer to you, you as uh, Ozzy really is the uh, the Lotus Juice of the uh, uh, Mario plus Rabbit soundtrack. That's pretty true. Uh, by the way, yeah, I, like not, not a thing we're actually going to talk about. What's the uh, what's the current hype check? We already talked about Tactica, but what is the uh, reload hype check? So um, we I mean, literally it's... had a moment. Was it last night where we just sat and rewatched every single reload trailer? Yeah, we did the. Um, what a great invite! I appreciated being there. That was a m- <laughs> yeah. monumentous uh, occasion. Because mm-hmm. yeah, like I, I'm something big would have to come out for Reload to not be my game of the year. Um, have I got news for you? Michelle Octopath Three is right around the corner. I don't think it is. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> um, no, yeah, but like something like really big and like something that i'm super into would have to like come out this year like like they'd have to make like mario odyssey 2 for <laughs> reload to not be like my game of the year um mm. or the rumored persona 5 party game mm. um but yeah because last year last year the persona game was not my game of the year it was like borderline a tie between hi-fi rush and um uh darkest dungeon 2 so. Shout fucking out to Darkest Dungeon 2. Like, I, I know it's, I, th- I think it's still in early access. Or no, at least it's out. Still, uh, is it just on PC, though? I think, like, I don't think it's been ported to consoles yet, has it? It's just, it's just on Steam right now. They, they, they're gonna do it, they said, they just don't know when. Dude, but yeah, it, it, it'll happen. Dark, shout out to, like, there, there are some, I think there were three indie sequels that came out last year, or at least out of early access, that I'm like, I can't believe more people haven't talked about. Darkest Dungeon 2... Blasphemous 2, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, Rogue Legacy 2. Like, so many, uh, I'm yeah. like, I can't believe I've heard so few people talk about how good all of these 2s are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, because, like, okay, the general, cons- I can't speak for the other 2, the general consensus on 2 is that it's a very good game, but, like, you know, like, if you go on Steam, yeah, reviews are mostly positive, but you do see some negative reviews, mainly from people who really like the first game and are like, I don't like how different this is. Which, like, I kind of get DD2 is pretty different from the first game, but also I don't care. I like this game a lot more than the first one, and I already <laughs> adored the first one. Yeah, I played a stupid amount of Darkest Dungeon 1 on... Uh, playstation vita which i will now of course never play the second one on but when that finally comes to like console i will for sure check that out yeah because the Um, the first one i have 143 hours in the second one i probably have like yeah second one i between because i I bought it on i rebought it on epic um or i I rebought it on steam i have 167 hours on epic and night and 19 on steam Oh, you know what? That's a big thing that I think, though, did hurt Darkest Dungeon 2, mm-hmm. is that it launched on Epic first. I think a lot of people it, didn't check it out there because of that. It, it was early access, and then once the once 1.0, it dropped on Steam, was how they did it. <laughs> it did the Hades thing, except didn't make a lot of money. Yeah, because ha- Hades, from what I, my experience, Hades felt like it got really popular with people once the switch release once the switch version came out yeah and it was like in like the indie direct and stuff like that um i don't know so maybe darkest dungeon 2 will have that moment once it comes to consoles but i don't know it's still like a good pretty successful game um as as 12,000 reviews on steam so people bought it i i will quickly say uh something you brought up earlier michelle Mm -hmm. uh because you brought up the uh, persona party game we don't have to talk about it specifically right now. We can get to it when we get more into like prediction stuff later. Yeah. Uh, there was a massive update of news on what that is mm-hmm. that I don't think you actually saw or that we talked about. I know. Uh, you will be very interested to hear what is up with that. Um, Hell yeah. Because, okay, I, I guess I, I will say this before before we like get into it. There's a chance it got canceled. <laughs> Oh. From, from yeah, the rumors well, I was of it. gonna say the last time I remember hearing about a shitty party game was in like summer of 2023. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, so 
based on credible leakers, and by credible leakers, I mean the one leaker who has consistently been credible. God, I uh, hope it's not Zippo. No, it's not. Sadly, sadly, Zippo has passed. The flame, the flame has died on Zippo. Uh, yeah, so uh, Persona ASA, which was the rumored, it was going to be like every single Persona game, uh, or at least all the protagonists to some capacity were going to be in it. Um, so I forget the exact name that it was. It was something like Persona Parade something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it was revealed. One that it might it might be canceled. They're not sure. Atlas might be switching their plans of releasing it, but I think it's finished. Um, but so this quote unquote party game, apparently, uh, as when they say party, it's more in line with like MOBA <laughs> and yeah. developed by fuck? studios behind like League of Legends. <laughs> I, it's not Riot, but it's like other studios involved with it, I believe. Mm-hmm. Knowing, my, knowing my luck, it'd be the fucking, like, Smite developers. <laughs> yeah, so so a lot of the reactions to it have been like, man, it is a shame that something got cancelled, but also, like, if what we are hearing is accurate, might might not have been amazing. <laughs> might have mm-hmm. been insulting to our faces. <laughs> so, so the general story is that if that is accurate, that it's at least in, like, not development limbo, just release uh, limbo, because Atlas wants to make sure the products they're releasing for the brand are of higher quality. Mm -hmm. That's the general narrative. Awesome. I I literally forgot, like, I pushed this out of my brain after the discussion came up last year. This is so fucking wild. I will say... Never say never with this company, but like literally at the same time. Oh god, I I don't know. It's a uh, what I don't know. Like imagine like all the people out there who are like they want Persona Q again, they want Arena again, and then we just get like a party game. Like I think a party game could be fun and especially like an interesting like evolution of the like very late. By the way, don't you guys love how like the anniversary of Persona got infinitely better once it fucking ended. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that it's the that anniversary sounds... of the anniversary. <laughs> this is even more special. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like literally, like thinking of like even just dumb things. Like a, a fun thing I found out that will lead into one of my no- other questions is like uh, when researching the limited run Persona three and four stuff, I found out they got that and were able to pitch it after the anniversary because oh they God. thought it was just going to happen through Sega. <laughs> <laughs> um but Jesus Christ, yeah. But uh but yeah, Oz- Ozzy, what about you? Like what have you been playing besides the work game? Um yeah, cuz earlier in the year I wasn't playing that much. I played Engage, like I mentioned Fire Emblem. Um I no life Octopath Traveler 2 um like no other cuz um, it, it's it's approaching you soon, Michelle and Spencer. I'm gonna be on your butt about this too. That is easily my game of the year uh, for 2023. Like it is not even close with anything else I've played. Um, closest uh, thing though, which I'm still working through, Alan Wake 2 is also peak, which I've been really enjoying. I will say you do not need to sell me on Octopath 2. We've talked about this before. I don't know about like you, you Michelle, but like for me, it's a matter of it. I'm sorry, it's a matter of when versus if, which is really saying a lot because I remember like when we talked about like playing the demo, I was like, because originally I'm one of the haters of like I think Octopath One is incredibly overrated for how well it did and how well it sold, and that really like dampered a lot of my excitement for two. It was very much a game that was released in the right time and place. Even if I still love that game, I love that game way more than most people. It has very heavy flaws that for an average audience, which a lot of the average audience did buy this game, which is why it sold so well so fast. That game sold like a million copies in like three days or something or like a yeah. week. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, like for a lot of general audiences who are not into like classic JRPGs, it was trying to be a very classic JRPG, including a lot of classic problems. Um, but the second game fixes all of those. Donkey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Um, cause for my, my video games, 
I I have Octopath 2 on Steam. I haven't played it yet because uh, I've been I want to finish my other RPG I've been playing through, which is Mario RPG. Uh, I got the remake of that, and I've been playing through that. It's very fun. That is the silliest game I've ever set my eyes on. It's it's great. Cause um so cause I I was talking about this like with you I, I don't know if you were in the call Adam but like I, I mentioned this to other friends basically like so I always liked Mario RPG like the original I I, I played it a bit growing up because it was on you know WiiWare or the you know whatever um and um I always liked the original but I never super got into it because like growing up like I just played Thousand Inside Story and like Thousand Year Door first yeah so like. For as much as RP- Mario RPG has aged very well, it just felt like the older, less featured game of, like, the the sort of, like, three Mario RPG series. Mm-hmm. Um, so once I actually got... But yeah, like, the remake definitely... The remake feels really nice. It plays super nice, runs super well. I love all the new mechanics and quality of life changes. It's a really fun, good remake <laughs> that is also very faithful in basically every way that is good. I was going to say, I still remember seeing a complaint from someone. I forget who it was. It wasn't even like a random Twitter person. It was like someone I knew, but I can't <laughs> remember who said it, where they were like, yeah, like I can't, I, I don't know, I got the Mario RPG remake and I just can't appreciate it. It's just like, you know, it's a faithful remake, but it just feels too much like a Super Nintendo game. I'm like, yes, because it's a faithful remake of a Super Nintendo game. Literally, what were you expecting? It's also, a, it's also a good Super <laughs> Nintendo game. Yes. I can't fucking believe that that, like, as a sentence that came from someone who was smart enough to scrape $60 together. That f- sentence fucking hurt it's my brain. It's so funny. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That game seems rad, though. I do eventually want to get on that. Um, I think the other only, only other big game I can think of having played this year, unless I'm completely blanking on something. Uh, I did eventually get through all of FF16, which... Mm. That, game, that game is a lot of things that I will not even go into right now positive but like that game is a lot that game <laughs> I've is got a lot of sl- i've got a lot of slurs to sling your oh. way 16 <laughs> no there that game is too much to get into but it is like the craziest spectacle honestly six, 16's my biggest uh i can't believe i haven't beaten it from last year just because of how big of a fan i am but uh I had to pick between that and Zelda, and as silly as it is in oh, retrospect, yeah, I, Zelda. I was like, <laughs> I gotta beat Zelda first, even though, like, in reality, I never had to really worry about getting spoiled by Zelda. Like, there are things to get spoiled in Tears of the Kingdom, but I definitely should have just shut up and played 16, because, like, I think I rolled credits after 100-plus hours of Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. Oh, man. What else have you been playing, though, Spencer? Oh my god, like literally this is like the most embarrassing like thing ever. It has just been Pirate Warriors the last week of my life. <laughs> uh just to like really submit like how old I am. So like I was if I had any more PS3 time, I might boot it up tonight. But since I was like I like dusted off the PS3 literally just for Pirate Warriors 1 because it's the only system it ever got put on. Every other sequel of that game got put on to whatever, which is always really weird cuz like you think of, like, those Warrior games, like, the only ones that are tied to one console are usually, like, the Nintendo ones. Mm-hmm. And, e- and even then, it's like Fire Emblem Warriors was at least on 3DS and other stuff. So, like, Pirate Warriors 1, I was like, I gotta just beat this. I, it, it it was the definition of a game that Spencer never should have bought, even though I love One Piece and Warriors games, because it was a digital-only game in the West, but I think I bought it for, like, some stupid cheap thing, because back in the PS3 era, you guys might not know this, but, like, the PlayStation, not PlayStation, Sony had a policy only in North America. If your game didn't have English voice acting, and they kept this up for the longest time, if your game didn't have English voice acting, it had to be digital only. Weird. Yeah. So there would be cases of like you could buy like a lot of physicals and you ever wonder, like, why is this game a physical in Europe, but not in America? That's usually why. So it had a lot of weird cases like that. Um, I won't go into it just because uh, it's a fucking Warriors game. Uh, It's still really fun, but it's it's one of the weirdest uh it's one of the weird. I, you could tell why they've never ported it. It's just one of those things of like you play it. And you're like it was a very of the era kind of game, 
that I definitely get. But what I want to play next, because I just had the PS3, and I'm like, I might as well just play, like, because there's still a, a, like, I played a lot of games in the PS3 era. Like, I don't have a lot of blind spots, but there's one that I was like, man, I always regretted never playing this, and it was The Puppeteer. It was by mm-hmm. Sony Japan, and it's this really, really gorgeous-looking uh, 2D platformer that you play as, like, a... Think, like, the aesthetic is uh, Mario, like, Paper Mario RPG with, like, yeah, the okay. on-stage mechanic, but with platforming, and it's really, really cool. Okay. Oh, yeah, so that that's cool. Yeah, it's, like, that's... Uh, that's one I like. I always wanted to get to, but was just one of those things of, oh, I'll get to it eventually. Get to it eventually. Like two generations later, I'm like, all right, if I don't sit down and play this, I'm never gonna fucking play this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's basically it for like what I've been playing. Uh, before we kind of go into the main topic, I was actually curious because I, I mentioned the limited run thing, and I and I, I I know I've talked to Ozzy about this, but I wasn't sure where, especially like you were at, like Michelle. So. Limited Run, oh my god, four months ago now, announced mm-hmm. they were doing yeah. P3P and P4G. No, no, so no, I, you, have, you have to correct yourself. They announced they were doing P3P, and then a couple weeks later, or sorry, they unofficially they, announced in a tweet reply, they're like, oh yeah, we'll put up P4. They, uh, anna- they announced soon. both at the same time. The only deal was they, they typoed it on the reveal, which is what made it look dumb. So yeah. we knew they were doing both, it's just the pre-order periods went up like a month apart. So you yeah. could still pre-order them both in one order if you wanted. I don't know why you ever would, but like, they put uh, both. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> So yeah, like I was curious, like what both what both of you guys think about it in the sense of were you excited about it? Uh, did you pre-order it? Did you boo it? Like what what did you what did you guys think when they announced it? I, I can answer all three of those questions. <laughs> uh, I was not excited about it. Uh, I did boo it and I bought it. <laughs> uh, see, I I'm basically in the same camp as Adam, except I didn't buy it. Yeah, like I. It was this whole deal of me being like, I hate limited run games. I think that their practices are very bad and predatory and they really do not have great like service and very much are have very weirdly like preferential treatment towards like a lot of certain products over others. But there's that like little inkling in the back of my head. And I'm just like, gosh, dang it. Persona Steelbook. I'm like, uh, my- so I'm like, I'll scrape together the money, I guess. My thing with my thing with it for me was I was like, I own a physical copy of Golden for Vita. I own a physical copy of P3 FES on PS2, and I, I already own Portable digitally on my Vita. If I ever wanted a physical copy of Portable, I would rather, even though I know it's expensive, I would rather... I like I, I just wouldn't care about having it on like Switch or whatever. I would rather get the original PSP version because I, I think that's cooler. And just like, also, I'm not gonna play Persona 3 Portable if I'm just being honest with myself. I don't, I don't care. See, Michelle, you don't understand. I do. You're, you're right. You're stupid. You're right. No, yeah. you're right. But yeah. you know how much funnier it is to have Persona 3 Portable on a giant disc that is <laughs> bigger than the PSP. <laughs> that is so funny I'll, to me. I'll you could not you. stop me. Mm-hmm. It's only funnier buying a giant fucking xbox version of this psp game uh, that still has the psp font just because like in my brain i'm like let's be honest guys even if atlas released these physically and they still might because they know we're stupid and we'll fucking buy them i know without a shadow of a doubt that in no other world will we be able to own a fucking giant xbox version of persona 3 portable and persona 4 gold yeah <laughs> I also will say I do feel bad about anyone who bought like the actual collector's editions of these limited run releases because like you know there has to be a lot of people where it's like yo an evoker I can get an evoker I'm like you can't you know you can't like remove it from the box right like it's not even it's like half of a shell yeah <laughs> no, it's, it's like it's a very lame collector's edition like two hundred something dollars I'm like come why are you on ta- why are you talking about me like I'm not here I'm fucking right here I'm listening Spencer, to you Spencer Spencer <laughs> even I bought Spencer every version on every platform for review purposes do not judge me 
Now, I, now I'm pulling the fire alarm. <laughs> er, er, idiot alert. Idiot alert. I mean, listen. I needed a steel, and I mean need in all caps. I needed the steelbook on PlayStation 4. I needed the steelbook on Switch because they're shaped differently. They're, they're different. You can't just have, like, the same. Um, <laughs> and I was like, the Grimoire edition and whatever the, like, other, the mid-level edition, which you, you you probably bought, you are correct. That's the only version you need to buy. The little tchotchkes that come in all of them are fucking stupid. But you yes. know what else is fucking stupid? Every other collector's edition I've ever bought. So why not just, like, add to the no, stupidity of it? I've bought some good collectors. I'll even, I'll stand my ground on actually complimenting <laughs> Atlas. The Unicorn Overlord collector's oh. edition. <laughs> should be called Overload. Overload. Yeah, the Unicorn Overlord. <laughs> Overlord Collector's Edition, every time I look at that, I'm just like, I just nod my head very slowly and just go, yeah. Hot yeah, take, that's awesome. I, we'll talk about that game later. I don't, I I, th- actually, I think actually Atlas is falling off Collector's Edition wise for me. I don't know if you guys agree with this, but I feel like Atlas is charging more than they ever have for Collector's Editions. They're skipping out on a lot of collector's editions, even physical stuff. Like the fact that Sega in the West skipped out on Yakuza Gaiden, yeah, like is That's wild as fuck. Yeah. But like even the fact that like think about it like this, Tactica had nothing. They gave the third fucking version of Royal a collector's edition yeah. that couldn't even sell out, and then this one doesn't get it. No, that's the thing. Like that's why I'm give like Unicorn Overlord is such like a standout to me because it's like. For 130, you're getting like a 160 page art book or whatever. You're getting like a special remix soundtrack. You're getting like a big old box. You're getting a full like card game. You're getting like all this extra, like really cool, genuinely like useful and interesting stuff that like is really like it's cheaper than almost any other Atlas Collector's Edition. It is shocking that it's coming from not them. true. Dude, in the like, last ten plus years. Not it, dude, literally not true. Like Senior, do you remember how expensive the Royal Collector's Edition was? Uh Royals was like what, ninety I think is how much I spent on that thing? It was under a hundred. Dude, like yeah. Atlas really? Collector's Editions used to never be more than a hundred bucks. They were pretty never. cheap, yeah. Okay, that's the ironic thing is like like you mentioned, like, you know, we both bought that limited run games stupidity, but even me having done that, and I am way more excited for P3 Reload than like any like uh, P3P enjoyment in my mind. I did not even think twice about buying the Reload Collector's Edition because it's like, yeah, you get a statue that looks worse than other Iga statues they've released in the last year, and like that. That's like it. That's all that really matters. You get, I guess, like a Listen, soundtrack. They're at least they're at least smart in the fact that they at least swapped out for the fucking armband. If they gave us that fucking armband, I would have laughed them out of the room. Yeah. That armband is the. I know. I know. Cosplayers are excited for it. I think that armband is like one of the stupidest collector's edition items they've ever included. It's very silly. Uh, you know, you know what the real problem with modern Atlas collector's editions is, though, right? Mm. where's the fucking steel books? I don't know. Like, I don't know what's happening. I want them. I like them. They're, they feed that brain rot for me. I don't know. Like, I love, a, I love an art book. I love a soundtrack. Both of these things cost barely any amount of money. No <laughs> That's actually Realistically. Yakuza, or sorry, Like a Dragon 8, isn't even getting a steel book. When I remember seven got two at Dude, Best y- Buy. They gave Yakuza me two. eight. Yakuza eight isn't even getting a collector's edition. That's yeah, the wildest thing. They're yeah. being very weird about this stuff. I don't also, know why. Can we can we like talk about this? Because we're gonna get into predictions anyway, but we gotta talk about this. Can we just all collectively tell Atlas and Sega to just fucking chill? Like yeah. they're releasing Yakuza and Persona and Unicorn within less than a month and a half of each other. That's yeah. the thing, like, Like a Dragon 8, again, like any other year, would be my go-to where I adored 7. This is, like, a potential game of the year contender. I would, like, die to have it. Doesn't that game come out, like, in, like, three days or something? Asterisky. I It's, it's like, right around the quarter. Um, 
it is, the, any it, other it is time. the week before it is the week before royal so royal reload so okay. that will be okay. and of it's course like my calendar's week, gonna yeah. pop up yes it's uh not oh my god are we two weeks away from royal not jesus reload yeah we're getting yep. there just about comes out like the second or, so, or third or something second um uh, Yes, it's the uh, I think it's the 26th, either the 25th or the 26th. Yeah, it's next week. That's fucking insane. Yeah, any other year, that would be like my go to like day one. I don't I'm not getting that game at release. I don't even know if I'm going to play it by like not because I have no interest. That is one of my most hyped games ever. But there's so many other things on that level that have been coming out that I just don't have the time and don't have the money. My thing is because like obviously like a Dragon 8 is going to like actually feature Kiryu in a meaningful regard. I need to I want to actually play the rest of Yakuza first. Mm-hmm. At least a uh, bit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Jewish, I I, I gonna, own all of them, so. Are you going to wait until they let Young Ya dub the rest of the game so he can dub 0 through 6 first and then you'll play it? Yeah, sure. No, I I I <laughs> I, I own cuz I, I I did, you know, when when Sega does one of their trademarks by Yakuza 0 through 6 for like $2. Uh I picked it up on Steam. So I have yeah. like I have all of them. Um and I, I already love 7. So I just need to I want to work my way through those games. 0 would be a pretty easy one for you to play this year. That that game is you know, it's long by the standards of normal games, but it's not like your JRPG investment. It's like a 30-hour experience. Yeah, I know cuz isn't like isn't like 7 the longest by a long shot? <laughs> Uh, the main story it's 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 a weird there. tie yeah so like mm-hmm. zero is probably the second or third longest like yeah because i know two, five is really long yes I five think. five is probably the only one i can think of that might be tied with seven but seven just feels longer because of it being an rpg but yeah. like just from zero through six Five is hilariously long, but that's because of you play as nine million fucking people. Yeah, five is like uh, forty hours just for the main campaign, and also it's a Yakuza game, so that's like all what, the like thirty percent of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like all the other ones are usually sub twenty, and even some like sub ten if you're just mainlining it. So like they're yeah, usually yeah. pretty disposable. The only yeah, the only one just to kind of be aware of would just be. Zero is a little bit longer, but that was mostly because they had more development time than they usually do, and that's another one of having multiple protagonists. Yeah. Mm. It's good. It's good. It's, you know, the Yakuza problem, though, is a weird one. The Yakuza problem right now is they're all good, but they all keep fucking coming out too fast. Like, we had two Yakuza games. Actually, we've had, we had th- we'll have three Yakuza games released within 12 months. Because remember, Ishin yeah, released Ethan, in, what, yeah. March or April. Gaiden was November. And then Like a Dragon 8 is j- j- yeah, January. So it's like, dude... And and the and the fucked up part is it's not even just oh hey slow down Sega you're giving me too much of a good thing it is affecting the quality of those games the localization mm-hmm. has gotten worse the amount of bugs and typos and errors and just other little weird things like mm-hmm. people have noticed a lot of weird little discrepancies with it that all obviously just come back to the fact that people are like. Well, maybe you didn't fucking release three games at once. Like, the reason Like a Dragon Gaiden didn't get its English dub till like, a, I think a month or two after release was because they had to finish the dub of Yakuza 8 first. Yeah, it, it is very weird, like, the turnaround that I feel like they ever since they've gotten, like, their foothold in the West with Yakuza and, like, or, like, Like a Dragon, like, they commit way too hard. So it's like, oh, uh... I, was it was it six or I think zero came out before six. They're like, yeah, oh, zero it was, was popular it was zero, over here. Zero, Kiwami, Kiwami yeah. two, and then six. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's popular. We're gonna release like all these games back to back to back to back, and then add all these collections, all these remasters, back to back to back to back. It's like I I like these games. They're great. Relax a bit, please. <laughs> uh. So now, now, now that we've become the Sega Bash Bash Cash show, uh, yep, we're gonna we're gonna get into the main topic of the show, which is Atlas 2024 predictions. And you know, it's funny. I don't think we've done this since like we did one of these like three years ago 
with Senorish and David Cast RPGs, who I think has now been out outcast to the the barren lands of Canada. I don't know. I actually, I I legitimately <laughs> was thinking about this. Is like I can't remember the last time I talked to David. It's been I think like maybe around SMT five. It's been a very hot minute. Yeah. So if anyone out there sees him, just just let just let David know that one guy in Canada brought him up. Uh, but yeah, so we've got our predictions. Will we be holding ourselves accountable for any of these? Of course not, unless we get them right. And then Ozzy will tweet about them for at least a month to make sure the internet knows he got something right. No, I, so, I can make a definitive claim that, Michelle, if you're wrong about any of these, I will do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for saying that into the microphone, sir. That, that'll be enough evidence for you. Mm-hmm. So the only stipulations with these, we brought four predictions – They have to be about Atlas. They don't have to be about games. They can be more than just about uh, Persona or SMT or uh, Metaphor. They can just be about the company as a whole. Do not, or at least if it's Sega related, try to kind of make it lean into Atlas would have a say in it either way. Mm -hmm. Uh, But that's basically about it. Besides that, it's just a carte blanche throw a prediction prediction throw your predictions out there and we will uh talk about the feasibility of these happening in 2024 because i think one of the reasons i don't know why we didn't do it in 2022 i think 2022 might have been an interesting year but would have been a hard one to gauge 2023 was probably one of the most like safe or boring years for atlas like we had the two ports at the january and then we had tactica and we had nothing else like the whole year. <laughs> so like in terms of like announcements and other things, there were things to kind of comment about, but it was a pretty quiet year versus this one is surprisingly busier with also a lot more going on and a lot more mm-hmm. opportunity for things to kind of get brought up. So, uh, Senores, do you want to go first? What is your first prediction? All right. Persona three reloads going to release on February 2nd, throwing that one out there. Cold read. I've got um, some news for you about uh about that game releasing early in certain countries. Ah, uh, damn it. Um. Wait, yeah. yeah wait, hold on, yeah. Where did that come from? Why were Why are people thinking that game releases early? Hmm. Like people. Oh, were, that like, a people thing? Were, like, I was just saying that like the early releases in general. Well, also there's some sites that just like ship those games out early. Well, yeah, but hard. like literally, I I saw people like of last couple of days, I've seen things going around. People were like, oh yeah. Persona comes out January 30th. They're like, no, it doesn't. Like, why are people saying, like, this no, game comes out in January? I, I need people to start posting the, uh, like, the Animal Crossing memes that came out during COVID, where it's like, Nintendo, <laughs> please release Animal Crossing oh early. Oh, my God. <laughs> dude, people were, oh, dude, there's one of those that fucking exist for Persona 5 Royal. I, I'm 90... 90 percent sure oh, it was yeah, either, yeah. like, Fidel or, like, the fan, or the fan site made it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I fucking forgot about that. Please, Nintendo, give us our games early. We know they're done. <laughs> the, I the, love the worst. I, I, that. Oh, uh, man, I, I love that Animal Crossing thing. I'm We're going to derail immediately. I love the I love the Animal Crossing thing because this wasn't even like. COVID was like. Existed for like a couple weeks at that point in terms at least of like, like public consciousness. In the yeah. US. In terms of like published consciousness, like, yeah, obviously it had been around like for a while, but like, you know, like at that point it was like, Oh, this is like the first time like Western countries are like being ordered to like do lockdowns. People were inside for three days and were immediately like, I need animal crossing. Now my 3ds exploded. I can't play new leaf anymore. It's, it's impossible. I can't do it. <laughs> I need New Horizons now, and that's so much funnier looking back at now that we realize New Horizons is kind of mediocre. <laughs> what it what a time! Grew into being something better. That like if that released, you know, if, if New Horizons released in its current state when COVID dropped, that would have been crazy. It didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, Atlas. Um. Yeah, so I guess, I guess I don't know how much of like this is like prediction slash speculation. So beyond like beyond like the you know being able to dress up as Joker and listen to Last Surprise, do we think Persona Three Reload will get like actual DLC for the things people are mad that it doesn't have? I don't know. Well, you, 
You have to guess first, and then and then we'll let you know if we agree or not. <laughs> I I'm gonna say no, but I I I honestly could go either way on this. Well, because I'm just thinking, how often does Atlas release DLC that is substantive that is not released day one? Mm-hmm. Does that has that happened? Never. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So. I doubt it. Um, that's why there's obviously the jokes of, oh, we're getting reload to FES. It's like, I don't know. It'd be cool. It'd be interesting. A free update would be crazy. Mm-hmm. They could afford it, but yeah, probably not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I would have to say there have been a lot of games that Atlas could be like, oh, the first blah, 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 we'll do this. But then, like, thinking about it in actuality, I'm like, yeah, they would have announced it. Like, that's just not their MO. Like, and I don't think in a year where they have multiple other big games getting announced and released that, like, here's the first big question, guys. If the Fez DLC doesn't come out in the first month, when does it come out? It's not going to it's not going to launch anywhere near Metaphor. So clearly that either means there's no DLC coming or they're just going to make it its own SKU. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, that's like the weird thing with it of like, yeah, there's a lot to do. That's why, like, my only my only last little hope for for uh, Reload is I think with how tight lipped they are. And they, I will say they're actually really strict about the like spoilers for this one more than I would have thought they'd be, especially for a remake. So that tells me there's a chance that when you beat this game, there is something different. You can now play as Luigi. (laughs) Yes. Can you imagine like, they just like, they don't even like actually do anything. They just have like the Mario galaxy screen pop up of congratulations. You've beaten the game. You may now explore the universe as Luigi, (laughs) but like, I, I feel like, in my gut, I think Hiding Fez is incredibly not happening, but I think that there's enough of a chance that Atlas says, fuck you, we're going to give you a surprise by when you beat this game, you can unlock Femsey. I think that's enough of a thing they could hide leading up to launch that it would appease enough people and be one last real... Like, can you imagine the fan base's reaction... If that happened, and even if it leaked like a week before, people then just being like, it would then just bring up this whole wave of people being like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. And on one hand, you could be like, well, why don't they just announce she's in the game at the at the original part? Yeah, true. But also, why didn't Kojima just announce Raiden was in Metal Gear Solid 2 as the protagonist? Because uh, people know... I don't know think that, that Atlas is comparable about. with the psychopath that is Hideo Kojima. Well, no, but I, I mean in the sense of they're at least smart enough to know that if they that if they can hide her being in the game, it will give the game an incredibly large conversation bump that it never would have had versus, guys, the dogs in the game. Holy shit, the dogs in the game? <laughs> I'm, I I I think there's no way that's happening like that. I genuinely think that if it was like, I think if they could market that to some capacity, they would. I don't why? think there's any chance. I mean, I I say why, but then also they're, they're the fucking marketing dolts who are like, let's release a trailer every fucking two moons. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I I don't see that happening at all. It'd be silly, but I really doubt it. Yeah. I get it. All right. Well, speaking of being silly, what's your first prediction? All right. So despite the whole spiel I went about earlier <laughs> about how uh, the silly party game, the the silly Persona MOBA parade uh, is probably canceled. I still think that game is releasing this year. <laughs> <laughs> Against all odds, I think Atlas is gonna be. It's gonna be one of those cases of, yeah, would I would I really stoop this low to do this? Oh, yeah, probably. I think we're still getting it this year. Okay, so on that on that front, I won't allow you to just say that and move on. You have to say this. Mm-hmm. You have to at least say what console it will release on, when it will release, and 
Uh, yeah, if you can at least give me consoles and a window, I'll, I'll let that count as a prediction. This game, mark your calendars, will release on September 14th on exclusively for Android and iOS. You got it, Ann. Apple Arcade exclusive. <laughs> what a... And then we'll get a port to PC like three months later. So, like, this isn't even going to be, like, a we're going to play this kind of game. This is just going to be a fucking we ignore this game like it never happened, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Did I not even mention that before? I forgot. That that was the other thing is, yeah, it's, it was like a mobile game. <sighs> That's awesome. I heard the entire budget got scrapped and they uh, gave the money to Nintendo just to beg them to put sprites of Sophie in uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate. That's actually See, that would See, that would be, well, that already did happen. It was sick. Yeah. No, it wasn't. You can't say that was sick. That no one is allowed sick. to look at no, fucking JPEGs no, and Smash. No, it's like, Yo, no, no, Spencer. Dude, this is Spencer. Sick. No, you you don't know you're this guy. Person, you're the person who bought those freaking like four hundred dollars worth of limited run games collection edition. I get to have my moment. I'm the Are person who like, popped off gonna, and they were I'm like, you you're right getting now. new spirits in 2024. I don't want it. Yes. Here's the question. I need you to answer this honestly. <laughs> If they announced they're adding Octopath Traveler sprites, yes. do you think you yes. would like? Yes. Do you think you would ever shut up about that? Like, would no. that just be all you talk about for like a week? Yes. <laughs> That's not even a joke. That's not an exaggeration. Guys, they're I adding Bumbo. There. They're I adding would... Bumbo to Smash. Hey, in don't. Picture form. <laughs> like I, I, I'm being dead serious. If they said they are adding Octopath Traveler two spirits to Smash because Octopath one spirits are already in there. If they added Octopath 2 Spirits, I would sit there the entire week speculating on the exact enemy matchups that would be in those battles. I yep. hate I hate that so much. God damn it. <laughs> I okay. would be counting down the days. You have no idea. All right. Well, wow. And I and I was worried you guys wouldn't have any predictions. The, the, my, my fears have been come true. They're actually just bad predictions. So staying <laughs> on this negative front, I'll go first with my prediction. I don't know if anyone's going to predict anything about this. Here's my prediction for Atlas in 2024. Persona 5 X will not release in any English country in 2024. I can believe that. My logic behind this, Sega is a company who loves money, but is also pretty fucking incompetent when it comes to making money. And, like, if you think about, like, how long it took them to make other mobile games come out here, they're not really known for, like, simultaneous mobile launches, unless the words Sonic and The and Hedgehog are involved in them. No, because so, even that one they basically botched because people are still pissed that that's an Apple Arcade exclusive. Oh, yeah. I, I just meant in, like, other ones for it. But, yes, correct. That one as well. But, like, I think Persona 5X will come out eventually – but I bet Atlas is so cheap they're trying to see if anyone else or even if Perfect World will just publish it themselves because Atlas doesn't want to localize it. Mm -hmm. um, so my guess is that we'll probably hear news of an English release, but there is no way that they get that game comes out. And, and I will not count like public betas being in English because I could believe that probably towards the end of the year. But there will be no released in English in Australia or New Zealand version of P5X. Mm. What do you guys yeah. say to that? Uh, it makes sense to me. Like, <laughs> I can see it. I just like they keep I'm showing us news of this game, by the way, like. I feel like I should care more than I sh than I do, but I just don't. It's so I do. weird. I do. I care. I find it silly. You know, it's still the Persona gotcha Dude, game. The but... plot, and I mean this in the most heavy tense possible. The plot of like, are you like, are you the one who's going to kill Joker? Like the fact that they're trying to have any story relate to like the P5 universe is just the biggest news in my... Like, I, I already have a pretty low how important is mobile game story going to be, but, like, I feel like there's just no... Like, all these characters I'm seeing, they look cool, but they're, like, empty calories. Like, I mean, everything I see about P5X, I'm like, P this... Like, none of these characters are going to have a personality at all, from what I can tell. Now, I hope I'm wrong... I, I, don't, I don't even say that at all. Well, like, yeah. listen, 
I, I hope I'm wrong. I would love for this game to just be some giant expanded P5 Universe mobile game, and it plays like Honkai Star Rail with like the best parts of Persona. It looks gorgeous. It runs great. It's got ports on phones, PCs, and consoles. I'd love for that to be the case. But it just like it everything I continue to see by the game, it just screams to me this game will be dead in less than two years. I, okay, because I, I do want to quickly note on the thing you're like you're saying that the plot premise is along the lines of like this is the guy who's going to kill Joker. But yeah. like the little clip we see in that trailer is very obviously in Size Palace. It's not like this is a future thing happening. It's very much a I guess alternate timeline weird alternate reality situation unless Sai just had some it's, weird literal change of heart and she's like nah I, I think I want to mess with the legal system again <laughs> it's actually it's actually the sequel to Strikers no one asked for oh no I'm still asking for it I need it yeah no 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 no, no. we all asked for a sequel to Strikers but in this form is not the way we wanted it it's like how people ask for Persona 5 Arena and they they misread the message by giving us Persona 5 Arena Yep. I mean, I, I mean, I'm happy with that. I like that. Me too. Course. And just in that same vein, I still am weirdly excited for P5 of X. It's not like this blind excitement where I'm like die hard no matter what. Is it, but is for it as weird? silly as it looks, as silly as that game looks in a lot of things, it also looks strangely promising. Bro, yeah. is it weird that you're over here telling me you're excited? Man who loves Persona 5, shocking news, everybody, excited Woo. for more Persona 5. I'll yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> but yeah, so, Senor Trudeau, you, like, wh- where where are you at with the P5X check? Um, I mean, because basically every time this game gets, like, trailers, I'm reminded of why I'm interested in this video game. Because, like it looks way more high effort than I ever would have expected from the the elevator pitch of Persona 5 mobile game. Um, cause I, I don't know, I'm, I don't know, cause like, I don't like gotcha as like a game mechanic we slash can monetary that. practice. Um, but like, I don't know, this game just looks cool. It looks like a very, I don't know, it looks like a very interesting, th- I don't know, like, it, I, I, I appreciate just how much they're putting into it, and... Have, have you ever seen Aqua Teen Hunger Force? No. There's a great clip of uh, Master Shake talking to Frylock about Meatwad, and every time I look at the protagonist, like, the main hero you play as white face mcbrown hair i always think of a clip and i just go you look at this face and tell me there's a god that like i think it's so funny like i think p5x looks fantastic but every time i see it i i will say it 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 gets docked big points for having they looked and, and i know and i know i know this is not a popular opinion I think Joker is the most boring Phantom Thief out of the whole cast. I'm not saying mm. he's bad. I'm not saying mm. it's a bad design. I'm saying out mm. of all the other Phantom Thieves, he's the most boring looking one out of all of them to me. I mean, you know, I Spencer, mean, it's, it's okay if like, you know, <laughs> you're never going to know who started that fire. But I mean, <laughs> that's true. It's still creeping up. The, 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 fire, jo- the fire department is still there looking very disappointed there is no fire. I mean, Joker has my... Joker has my favorite character design, period, so I don't agree with that at all. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I completely disagree and I'm, would say it is easily the best design. No, of it is not. He's the bo- All right, th- that's not my point. My point is so that you know where I'm at mentally when I say this, that I think Joker looks infinitely better than the protagonist who's just got don't come to school on Monday trench coat with fucking douche glasses. I mean, I do agree that Joker is better. We're just working from very different metrics. But like, yeah. he looks he like he is the meme of Blood thinks he's on the team. Like nothing about his outfit gives me Phantom Thieves vibes. I he's one, the, he's one of the few that does for me. Like if he yeah. was if he was in if he was like the new character of Strikers too, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. It's oh like, my god, dude, we would laugh my, him out of the room. No way, Jose. No way. Of, I don't no, know, it's not like it's not it's not that far off from like 
something like Zenkichi. Zenkichi is better, but like it, it's it's in that same realm for me. Whereas like closer, you, <laughs> yeah, you show me the blue haired guy's outfit and it looks unfinished. I just, I just think everyone else's outfits and character design is infinitely better looking than his though. No. No, who a, looks, a lot who of those, looks worse than him? The fucking owl? The friggin' the like like Michelle said, the like cowboy guy who's got this really weird combination of like the overall straps and like the, the friggin' jean shorts. Like the, the khakis with the cowboy hat and like the muscular spandex. I like, really wish sweet. I really wish I knew his name because I'm just typing in Persona Cowboy and hoping Okay, hold on, is he the minigun? Yeah, for P5X. Okay. Yeah, it's that looks story. okay. You're right. That looks bad, but that at least looks like an unfinished design. Where like I, I it looks unfinished, but, but it they is can a finished fi- design. Listen, they can fix him. We can, can still fix, fix him. I don't know. And even something like closer, like I think it's a fun design. That's the uh the girl with like the yellow hood. Um, it's like a fun design. I I like a lot of the personality they've shown of them. But it feels very much less like, yeah, we're the group of, like, gentlemen thieves and all the, like, different things that come with that. And more, I'm a hoodlum who I I guess I wanted to cosplay as a phantom thief, so I found a hoodie. Or, like, a raincoat. How far off would you all say I am in this statement? That the cast of P5X is like if someone made Timu come up with a new cast of Persona 5. (laughs) A little bit. Again, it's like they're they're coming up with new concepts for the sake of gotcha and like having some variety they know to appeal to everyone. So like the last uh the last show where they showed off a character where it's like that's that's just that's just Miku. We're putting <laughs> what do you Hatsune mean? Miku in this what do you video mean? Game. They were gonna bring her in eventually. Why why hold off? Just have yeah. her there at launch. Do we have Miku at home? By the way, <laughs> Uh, don't ever feel bad if you guys ever listen to this and think, man, maybe I'm missing out, and maybe there's some great gotcha game that exists out there, and that's and that's why Ozzy's so passionate about this. No, there are great gotcha games that exist, but he's not playing any of them. He's still probably fucking paying uh, Octopath Traveler's mobile Champions game. Champions of thr- the Continent. Dude, nobody <laughs> plays that game. That game, like, you have a better chance of having a discussion about various day life than fucking anything else. Okay, first of all, don't, don't ever invoke the name of various day life in my vicinity do you hear me you, you <laughs> despicable person dude second, it's like I, the worst second i'm throwing out one of my predictions earlier because screw you so i wrote down persona 5 collaboration with octopath traveler champions of the continent which so means in 2024 to be shut down? which means that yes which means that happen? my next prediction in 2025 <laughs> octopath traveler champions of the continent shuts down i will only allow that first prediction obviously you can't say a certain fact yes any game that collaborates with the persona 5 gets fucking shut down um just a bandori it's still going hard well i forget what was the nintendo one they killed it was the only reason that I, we got was it was it dragal was it dragalia lost, lost. Yeah, dragalia I about, lost. <laughs> yeah i was about to defend adam i'm like no he's played a, a good gotcha game because he insists that dragalia lost is the best game he's ever played it's so tell me, freaking tell good. Me you've all, tell me you've only played one gotcha game without ever saying you've only played one gotcha no, game. No, I play, I've played a lot of gotchas, and I did not spend any money on them, including that one. And I friggin' no life Dragalia lost. In fact, I stopped playing that game because I knew if I wanted to play that game as much as I wanted to, it was going to be too much of a time sink. That's fucking embarrassing that you would admit that in public, but I'll, I'll allow it. Dra- um, Dragalia... Dragalia Lost is a very important game to me because it gave me that Sophia model that I based an entire oh, Twitter yeah. gimmick account around. Is the gimmick account still active? Do we know the it, sign? Every it Saturday. Is. It, it posts every Saturday, yep. Oh, wait, is it the so- it's Sophie Saturday? Yeah, Sophie Saturday. Oh, okay. God bless yeah. that account. And that I, love, I love that it's, gift. It's an important account for me. Because I, <laughs> I was... I, I adored and was obsessed with that gift for, like, two years already. Um... So I just was like, I'm going to finally just make this stupid account where I, like, post this GIF every week, retweet Sophia art, and generally just show for strikers because no one else will do it. And then wait for me to respond every Saturday with the let's go! He does do that every Saturday. Ozzy, I want you to know, and I apologize for everyone else who will not understand this, I want to, like, Photoshop that scene at Marineford 
with Whitebeard and Squard after he betrays him, where, like, <laughs> he's like, you may be an idiot, but you're still my son and I love you. Like, I want to make that image for you right now when it comes to, like, your awful opinion about that fucking mobile game. Nah, I, I will swear by Dragalia Laws. What, what, okay, what gotcha games are you saying are, like, flying colors above that? Like, Outside of like like Honkai, get get like Honkai like easy, or yeah, all, out all of that. the all the Hoyoverse. No, no, like, but but get those out of your mind. Now name a different gotcha game that you're like you're repping hard. The problem, Mario Kart Tour. The, the pro, no, dude, that game is trash, hard is. ass trash. Um, Forty dollar Diddy Kong, anyone? <laughs> see, that's tough because like I I'm actually very like re, like I'm hard to impress with free to play mobile games. Uh, the only yeah, other game they I ever suck. <laughs> yeah, like I liked the Kingdom Hearts one, but even that one eventually lost me. So like that that's mm-hmm. really tough about it. Whereas like it's hard to have a game that can continuously have those hooks. Well, the, the so, problem with the Kingdom Hearts one is it pisses off Kingdom Hearts fans because they have to follow it if they want to know what's going on with that universe. We don't and, have to. It's a delight. It's a delight that we get to continuously experiment and experience as the days go by. Um. <laughs> no, yeah, like I, I, I would say I, I'm very hard pressed up for a long time with like a lot of those games with it. So it's hard to say because like I've tried so many, man. Like especially the Final Fantasy ones. Like I always. Oh, those are all garbage. Those they're not. <laughs> there are some with good ideas, but yeah, they eventually just good become ideas. hot trash. But are they good games? Are they good? <laughs> I, I, good ideas are one thing, but are they good games? That's the one thing I can give about Champions of the Continent. Like that game. The gotcha system in that game Snooze. is Snooze. terrible. No, no, because the gotcha system in that game is terrible. It never okay. gives you anything valuable. I could not care less. I, like, refuse to spend money on it because it's just not going to work out. But gameplay-wise, that is straight up like a JRPG. Like, it is a full game. And it is really weird to say that. Like, it's got a crazy good OST. It's got really good gameplay. It's just not a good gotcha. But you know what game, I should have answered solid. your question with? I should have said that fucking shitty Devil May Cry game that won't stop giving me fucking ads. Oh my gosh. <laughs> God. Uh, Senores, please please give us a bet that's not about mobile games. Um. All right. Um. So this, the, I, I guess, I, I'm just gonna throw these two out because they're basically the same level of. Here's a port. Um. I think there is a decent chance that Xbox might get strikers, mm-hmm. maybe. And I think Catherine Full Body might come to Steam so people will stop buying classic. <laughs> oh yeah, they never did do that. Never nope. ported it. It's just on just on Switch and PS4. People, people just have to excuse me? What the fuck did you just say? Is on something else I forgot about. What the fuck did you just say to me? And on this podcast, you would say that? <laughs> Sorry, is it on? Is it on the illustrious PlayStation Vita? It, it was the last Atlas developed game on the Vita. It released I in for- 2019. Oh, it killed the console. I see. It did. It did I forgot Catherine Full Body came out on Vita. Dear God. It was exclusive, like- exclusive to Japan, and it's one of the most technologically amazing games I've ever made on it. It's, it's like how I always forget that, oh yeah, Donkadrompa V3 was also on Vita. All of whoa, them were. Whoa, 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 whoa. I forget what do you that. Mean also, dude, it was the best way to experience V3. Because if you didn't download the high quality audio assets, it sounded like everyone was talking through a fucking tin can. The way God intended you to play V3. <laughs> that does fit the themes of <laughs> Donkadrompa V3, as everyone claims whenever you point out something bad with that game. <laughs> Can you can you imagine like watching like a really emotional like uh jury scene and without the high quality audio package? You're... <laughs> oh, that's so Which, good. By the way, reminder, game. if you didn't download that DLC because NIS lost the assets and Spike Chunsoft can suck every bag of dicks out there because they didn't republish it, uh, you just can't do it. So if you buy V3, a game that goes for over a hundred dollars now, V3 on its own for Vita is like really hard to find. Yeah, I can you, imagine. You have to play it with no audio. Like, sorry, no high-quality audio. That's great. What a Awful. great game. Awful. I love V3. It's amazing. <laughs> Finally, um, an- another reason for me to not like Danganronpa V3, a version <laughs> of the game I won't play. <laughs> it's, no, it's no Ultra Despair Girls 2, but what, whatever yeah. will be. 
Um, I will I will say I I definitely agree with that because especially everything I know about Koei Tecmo is like I feel like if they just gave them like a fucking Jersey Mike sub and a hand job one day that they would probably <laughs> port it to Xbox. That's all it yeah. would take. Yeah, because like because like nobody. No, nobody cares about like dancing in current years. Like I doubt, I doubt Phil Spencer's out here. Like, oh Atlas, my come god, on. what if they ported those before Strikers? Could you imagine? I would lose, I would lose my the mind. Reaction? Bro, Phil Spencer, he freaking he he loved he he loved Persona Three dancing. Um, no, nah, but yeah, like I, cause like I I can't imagine those getting ported to anything. Even though I think. I okay. I think if you port Persona Three and Five dancing to other consoles and just have it come with all the DLC, that fixes like half the problems with that game. Because dear God, those games DLCs are silly. Um, expensive. Yep. But like, I don't know. I, I I could definitely imagine like Strikers coming to Xbox, since that's like probably the P5 spinoff that like the most people still care about. Like, even above Tactica, which is not even a year old, like. See, what sucks, though, is I, I want to agree with you about Catherine, but Catherine Full Body just sold really bad over here in the West compared to the first one. And I just don't really know why. Like, the Switch version didn't really release at a great time, but, it, like, was better than nothing. It was a pretty solid port, but then at the same time. I feel like a, a, an interesting kind of middle step of I believe Strikers is coming sooner rather than never. But mm. then here's my follow up question. I'd be curious what both of you think. When or if do we get Ultimax? Because I feel like Ultimax is up there with Strikers for me of Xbox has no reason not to have Ultimax. Uh, I, uh, I can give you a reason. Ultimax <laughs> sold like dog shit. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think they're gonna tread those waters again. Uh, cause like, cause if I remember correctly, Ultimax also did all did anyone did what was Ultimax on 360 even like? It was. Yep. Yeah. It was. I know. I don't. It was exclusive to the West. No, yeah, I know it was, but I was just saying, did anyone buy it? Mm-hmm. Um, it did surprisingly well. Like okay. at FGC, that is the main reason a lot of the people knew Persona back then was because. Oh, well, I, I, I think I think what they're asking though is how did it sell versus the PlayStation Three? PlayStation Three was definitely uh. the lead skew because mm-hmm. yeah. I, I was working in retail at the time when Ultimax came out. Mm-hmm. So 360 did fine, but Ultimax overall, like, mm-hmm. it was a weird one. So like when Arena One came out, it was like 50-50. A lot of people bought it on 360, and a lot of people bought it on PS3. Mm-hmm. But with Ultimax, because that released in a post next gen world because remember Mm. that came out in 2014 so ps4 and xbox were already out but these were only on last gen a lot less people were buying 360 whereas a lot of people were still playing ps3 games well Mm. into the ps4 Mm. so that is that is one of those weird ones of like i feel like yes it's one of the worst selling games but xbox has gone out of their way to get arc system works to publish all the blaze blue games, all the guilty gear games, like all of their most recent stuff with the exception of like, I think grand blue and DNF duel, all of, all of arc system works fighters have been ported to Xbox. Hmm. So I, I, I don't know. I think strikers is a slam dunk. Cause like, I think you announced that even if it's like on a random Tuesday or even at like a press conference, I think that's a slam dunk of like, boom! It's on Game Pass for for PC and Xbox, and people can check it out that way. I think that's a great way because like you look at, and and yeah. I think that and I think like this is almost kind of weird. Like, I don't know how much you guys would agree, but I feel like when P5 came out on Game Pass, I was shocked at how many people were playing and, and talking no, about it for the first time. Went wild over that. So yeah, with Strikers, if you advertise it as, hey, look, it's the sequel to that game that you adore. Yeah, people are going to flock to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a it it's a good prediction for sure. I just I hate that I know Catherine I would be shocked if they got ported. Soul. I would be so shocked. Uh, dang. All right. Well, let's see. Prediction number 2 for me. Let's try to be less negative this time for me. 
all the negative ones are so easy to come up with. Here we go. <laughs> this is a weird double-edged sword, but I think I feel it's true in my heart. Unicorn Overload, which is the new name. Yep. Mm-hmm. Will be the highest reviewed vanillaware game in the company's history, but will be the worst selling game since 13 Sentinels. No. Yeah. yeah. I'm putting that out there. I think it's releasing at a terrible time. I think it's releasing in a really crowded early spring. And even with it being multi platform, I don't think enough people are going to look at the reviews and the quality of that game and give it the recognition it deserves. I think it's a really niche strategy RPG that a lot of people are going to look at and go, ooh, that's pretty, see how it plays, and goes, oof, no thanks. I don't think it's going to sell like crazy, crazy. Again, it's like, it's vanillaware. It's vanillaware. But like, I, I can still see it reaching like a couple hundred thousand. Like, maybe like 500,000 plus, but I don't know. I, I don't see it like absolutely bombing. Well, I mean, this is also a company that's released less than 10 games in its lifespan. So not incredibly awful things to say, but like I expect this to sell like an Odin Sphere remake versus like a Dragon's Crown. Dragon's Crown and in the and in Japan, 13 Sentinels sold amazingly. I think they want this to be their next Dragon's Crown, but I think because of the niche nature of this genre, it's just not going to hit because it's releasing at a bad time. Mm. I don't know. I guess on the uh, flip side of that, like, with one of my predictions, I guess, I, I was just going to say that, like, P3 Reload, I think, is within the year is probably going to sell 3 million, if not more. Persona 3 million Reload. Woo! Mm. And in general, like, if I'm being extra generous, there's a chance that the Persona franchise as a whole hits, like, 25 million sales. Because I think it's, like, like just hit 20 million. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so they could pull that off if, like, that train just keeps trucking. Yeah, I can imagine it. Um, I just... I don't... Well... I am worried about P3 because I think it's going to review well. I think the fans are going to buy it. I don't know what legs it's going to have. That's what I'm worried about. Because it's I, releasing really early, but it's got so many games in February that I think are going to suck the air out of the conversation outside of us. I'm, th- this is one of the few times where I can actually say that Atlas has done a really, really good marketing job for a game. They well, fuck yeah, they, really they, they sabotaged the thing. entire marketing budget of Tactica. They fucking better have done a good job with it. So I genuinely think with like a lot of how they've pushed this, I can see this game actually doing really, really good in a similar way to like Persona 5, where, you know, Persona 5 coming up when that was releasing, it was a lot of, it's going to be our little niche group that is going to buy it and we're going to be into that. We are in a much bigger market now, though, for Persona, even from then. And I can see with the acclaim and the marketing, how they're pushing it, I can see this easily being like, the big game for like the spring season there I, until like yeah. the next one comes like may or something i don't know i'm looking yeah like i'm looking at february this year like just games coming out and i'm like i mean obviously a lot of these are like big good games that people are going to like care about but like i don't know i think per- persona 3 to me is like still very much like this it, it, it it's a it, it is a game that like if you want that kind of game, there isn't that much else coming out at the same time. Like, obviously, yeah, there's, like, a dragon. But I feel like, to some degree, those are, like... They, they have very... They have overlapping audiences, but they're not the exact same audience, just by both being turn-based RPGs, because one is the eighth chapter in a giant, continuous story, and Persona 3 is something that you can just buy and play mm-hmm. and not have to worry about it. Um, Because other than that, like, yeah, like, the next, like... You know, go, going off going off this games rant thing, so it might be missing some stuff. Like the next like big anime RPG is at the very end of the month with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yeah. So like, like I don't know. I, I think P3 there, Reload there, at least there is a there is fine. a big one. It's missing though. 
Mm. It just had a demo release. Grand Blue Relink. There is a lot of hype behind behind that game. That's been years in the making. Mm-hmm. I don't see that. I still don't know if I'd see that topping P3. I can see it like no, 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 maybe no, no. side by side, but for still, sure, like, for sure, yeah. for sure. But I mean, like, <laughs> we gotta remind ourselves, Grand Blue Fantasy is literally one of the most profitable fucking mobile games oh, yeah. in existence. See, see, Spencer, if we really want to talk about competition, same day as Persona 3 Reload, we're getting Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Wrap it up. The Wrap it up, seller? baby. The system seller. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did we all forget Jujutsu Kaisen Curse Clash? Spencer, you need to, like... Ja- games Rancher sure forgot, hobby. I'll tell you that. We need to stop having you talk about video games. It's like, not working holy out. Holy like, shit, guys. Like, how are we expecting to sell any copies when fucking Tomb Raider 1 through 3 comes out? Donkey, Donkey, Mario vs. Donkey Kong is going to crush February. That's all I'm saying. Also, yeah, um, now I'm looking at March. Nothing is releasing in March that I can even, like, name or point to meaningfully outside of Unicorn Overlord. Unless, like, Unicorn Overlord is going to have its overload, market please. stolen. Sorry, Unicorn Overload Thank is you. going to have all of its sales go to the Princess Peach game. Yeah, I was going to say, shut, shut the frick up. Princess Michelle, Peach Showdown's I've never sweep. been more disappointed in you for not mentioning Mario vs. Donkey Kong in February. I just said it, yeah, no. Uh, also, Skull and Bones. No. Skull and Bones. That, that game is going to be the immediate, like, you know, if that game released, like, four like three or four years ago like it planned to it probably would have gotten like some nice warm reception even if it would have been like a buggy mess they they are so late on the draw on this it is going to be a laughing stock fun fun little uh quick story i have a friend of mine i met through the podcast he was working at ubisoft shanghai on that on skull and bones back in 2013 i can believe it because, you know, like, the moment people were like, yeah, like, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, this one is actually, like, good. Or even, like, in the middle of development for that, where they could see the potential of that, it's like, well, we made the ship system, we might as well capitalize on it. Also, for, besides Super Princess Peach, I cannot believe you guys did not mention Dragon's fucking Dogma 2 and Rise of the Ronin. How dare both of you? Dragon's Dogma 2 will also be big, actually. Uh, Rise of the Ronin, I'm trying yeah, to my- remember... That is the Team Ninja open world uh, PS5 uh, ninja samurai like game. Mm. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, my my next prediction is that a shadow dropping also on February 2nd is going to be the (laughs) is going is going to be the English release of Spy X Anya Operation Memories, and it's going to put every other game company out of business. I'm excited about it's that. It's not game. Mappy! No, I, I said that that game was announced in the same direct that showed us Thousand Year Door HD and Spy On. It was still my most hyped game of that direct because I really like Spy Fam. It's out in Japan. I need to like look up it footage is, yeah. of it. I wonder how I wonder how the actual final game is. Um, I mean, it, 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 genuinely speaking, it's not like the greatest thing ever made. It's an anime cro- It's like an anime tie-in game, but it looks it's for very yourself. Okay, it looks very, like, cute and, like, just a very nice, comfy game. It, it, it's a game that's trying to be, like, a comfort game that's also not trying to be Stardew Valley, and I can appreciate that, because there's so many goddamn farming games. I just want to I just wanna play as a girl and go to school. So, so guys, when Spy Family gets the English um, theatrical release, we're all going to go see it day one together, right? I mean, I'm going to see it. Thank you. Sheesh. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It's definitely one of the biggest games in February for it. I just think there's just something looming over this release that I don't know what it is, but something is going to suck the air out of the conversation in a way that we hadn't, like, I think people are expecting this to kind of be like a royal where it comes out, we talk about it all, like for like the whole year. People are gonna be like, I just and and I think I've even like like had this as a prediction myself of like, if your game of the year is going to be P3R, you probably didn't play any other games after February second. I don't know about that. I mean, like, there's a lot of good games, but I think Reload still like, I think it's going to hold a lot of water. I don't know about that one. 
I'm so- listen. I, I'm excited for it, but there's also a lot of things about that game that I that I've already like had conversations with people. I know people who've already sworn it off because they haven't ch- made enough changes to Tartarus, and I can't fucking I can't knock them for that. I'm like, yeah, good point. I don't know. I feel like that's the kind of thing that like will. I don't know. I I feel like as because I don't know. I I I mean I'm that guy who really likes mementos. So like, I don't I know. I mean, to be fair, as much as I hate mementos, it is infinitely better than Tartarus. Well, yeah, but but well, most of the problem with Tartarus compared to mementos is just the fact that P3 is a not as fun RPG at a core level mo okay i was gonna say imo for sure but yeah i think many people would disagree that i i I would say the biggest strength p3r has going into it is the fact that it's still that base game story and a lot of people really fucking love that game story yeah i don't know the, the biggest improvement mementos made to the tartarus formula was that you now had a car true <laughs> I'm gonna be real. I I could imagine them just doing like uh, we added a dash button, but we didn't really want to change Tartarus, so we just let you drive around in Mitsuru's fucking motorcycle. Awesome. Yeah, we didn't know how to update the engine, so if you press the middle button on your PlayStation controller, Morgana still meows. Dude, <laughs> I'm gonna be real. I I continuously like because I'm I'm a I'm a big graphics nerd. I am continuously shocked how good P5, P3R p looks. That game yes. looks smooth as fuck. Like, I'm glad that Atlas has decided to stop trying to use their own engines. Because I, I, mm. I don't know. I, I like what they did with that for P5 and for Catherine. That was cool or whatever. But, like, I don't know. I, I think they've been doing good work with Unreal. and. Unity it was a little silly with Soul Hackers too, but even then, like that game still like visually I I appreciate how it looks. And I think I think them sticking with Unreal 4 has been working really well for them. See, I really hope what... SMT5 releases on anything but Switch. Be a good prediction if someone ever made one. Uh, it's on the list. I think you're next. You wanna you wanna you wanna throw that on, on your list then? I don't think it's releasing this year. But all, you know, a lot of people would see this as a very limp announcement, but I think it's funnier to commit to my gut instinct. Yeah, at the Game Awards 2024, oh my God. Uh, where Jeff Keighley gets mauled on stage by a bear uh, talking about Bill Clinton, uh, <laughs> SMT5 uh, Psychopath Edition will be announced and shadow drop the next day day <laughs> you got it man <laughs> i love i love how less and less confident you sounded the more yeah, you yeah, said like, that you were like the equivalent of laying the train tracks down and you got tired after the first turn oh only not a ps5 version only on ps4 that's actually the version that's that's the prediction that i'm more confident in by the way, uh, I, I did I did want to confirm this, but going back real quick to the engine thing, reminder, they are still making fucking metaphor on the same crusty ass engine that P5 was made on. That's funny. I mean metaphor <laughs> looks good, but Metaphor looks good, but every time I you see that game, I dare you to tell me you don't see all those fucking frame drops. That game looks Oh no, chunky. I do. Chunky. Um, that's why I'm like I, I'm I'm glad and hoping that there's more of a trend because they've been working on metaphor for a while. So that makes sense. That game that was like the where did this game go Atlas game other than like SMT5 for a hot minute. Mm. Um, so yeah, like after Metaphor, I think they're really just going to commit to we're just going to be using like Unreal probably. Well, I, I always find it funny people say that about Metaphor. Metaphor has only been in active development for like – and, and when I mean active, I mean like actually active, active. It's only been in active development for like five and a half years. Yeah. Well, even then the like – you have the same thing with, like, SMT5. That game didn't go into active development until, like, almost two years after the Switch presentation where they revealed it. Mm. That does lead into one of my predictions. And, mm-hmm. I, and, and I think we talked about this, like, a week or two ago, because Lister brought this up, but I can't get it out of my brain. Metroid Prime 4. <laughs> yep. Basically, Atlas will piss off the entire 
fandom again doing the same shit. At the Nintendo Switch 2 reveal, Atlas will be brought on stage and announce SMT6 is exclusive to the Nintendo Switch sequel, predecessor, whatever the fuck you want to call it. The Switch 2 is getting SMT6. <laughs> and now, just so people then don't think, oh, what? Aren't they just doing the same fucking thing? Because they'll show a teaser trailer, but it'll be a bullshit trailer. Like, no one will like it. Like, I won't even like it. It'll just be, like, the most nothing trailer ever. The only thing we're going to know is that it has an unknown release date. The same team from 5 is working on it, and they're now going to be using Unreal Engine 5 as opposed to Unreal Engine 4. The only difference... SMT5 will be ported. An enhanced version will be releasing on the Switch at launch, and then shortly after on multi-platform. That's why SMT5 hasn't been ported. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. See, um. Good. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna counterpoint that one. Oh boy. Same right, thing, Shapiro except it's not an exclu- It's not an exclusive. We're get we'd get that, but it'd be for Persona 6. You mm. think you think P6 would be exclusive to the Switch? No, too? no, it would not be exclusive, but they would announce it there. Fuck and no, <laughs> dude. I'm gonna say this right now. Sony would rather castrate themselves than lose the announcement. Even if Sony doesn't get P6 as an exclusive, Sony will chop off their left nut to announce no, P6 first. Because if we're being real, it doesn't matter what Sony thinks. If P6 is getting announced and it's going to be like a certain console, like a certain company pushing for that realistically at this point it's gonna be xbox mm. no i i would say i would say sony is still smart enough to know to get first dibs on the games that matter and honestly i think that you look at the games xbox has gotten go like go at i think it's more surprising that they got first dibs with metaphor versus even like p3 but like p3 is kind of like yeah, but you're we like here's the thing with with like when Xbox announces shit for Atlas. We all know deep down people are going to be playing it on the PlayStation 5 more than any other fucking system. Oh yeah, I'm not denying I'm not denying that, but like So 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 Sony knows that versus like I think the lineage of the next Persona, they'd rather have that over every new IP that Atlas has because they know they don't have to market people to play it there. Grant, I think you're also giving too much credit to the things that Sony is willing to, like, give major attention to in releasing or, like, announcing. These are the people who put in their big PlayStation so- showcase, the game Abandoned, which is <laughs> straight up fake. That game was never real. <laughs> Hold on. Actually, to be fair, Abandoned was only ever announced on the PlayStation blog. I don't think they ever actually had Abandoned at a state of play, did they? They did. That was where it was announced. It was, like, one of their biggest, like, PS5 state of plays. I'm going to abandon you. They did with that game, too. That's the irony of it. But it also, like, never started. That game was, like, conceptual from start to finish to just, like, get funding and attention. That's what awesome. A weird situation. So, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm hey, not uh, guys, so don't, don't forget to uh, download your abandon app on PS5, which hilariously was abandoned. Nice. Yeah, no, I I was there out of curiosity because I was still in that uh. I was I, I was, was there. I, I was there because it was everyone being like, so is this like some weird Kojima thing or whatever? Go like, what's happening? Dude, that and was it, three years ago. Where the fuck does time go? That was Man. not three. There's no. That way. was 2021. Are you no? That yes. That is not, look it up. I'm no no. <laughs> <laughs> What do you know? Fucking right. insane. All right. I'll throw out a prediction now if we're done with that one. I don't Please know who we are. Save All us. right. So, um, I, I guess, yeah, I'll piggyback off of that one and say that assuming whether I don't know if it'll get I don't like, you know, I, I've heard a lot of different dates for when the switch Two will come out. Oh my gosh, it was 2021. <laughs> so I've heard a lot of different dates for when the Switch 2 will supposedly come out. I think whenever the Switch 2 comes out, what, I don't know if it'll be there at launch, but I think within the first couple months at least will be when we see Persona 3 Reload on Switch 2. Mm. I think that'll come very quickly. And with with the bonus that if Atlas wants to appeal to me and Adam and no one else, they'll also do Soul Hackers 2. 
but Ooh. you know, <laughs> I don't know. I I think I think P3 Reload because like there you know obviously PlayStation is the big place for Persona, but like Nintendo fans care about Persona quite a bit. So I I think Atlas would prob hopefully maybe recognize that and like throw P3 Reload out there pretty fast. We can dream. I, as my assumption. I still think them skipping Switch is one of the weirdest moves for P3R, just because everything I've seen about that game, I'm like, there's nothing I've seen in this game that makes me think it couldn't run. Like, listen, if it's running on Xbox One, it can run on a fucking Switch. Well, that's the thing is, like, conceptually, honestly, like, if you were to put SMT5 on another console, that game would probably look like, if you were to put that on PS5, it would probably look on par with P3 Reload, if not better, with just how much dedication they put onto that. Like, mm -hmm. and that's also in Unreal 4. If mm -hmm. that game is still at least functioning on the Switch, with how much more expansive that experience is, Reload could easily fit on that thing without an issue on, mm -hmm. like, base Switch. So it's very goofy that they didn't. <laughs> yeah, that it is. It, that, yeah, that's such a weird one. That almost makes me like more. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna do conspiracy theory. That almost makes me more certain that my P3 re on Switch Two is like a thing because yeah. I think I think it'd be funny if Atlas just did not put P3 Reload on Switch specifically because they wanted to drum up more buzz for it whenever it comes to Nintendo. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I a lot would, of people would, did buy Reload, or not Reload, uh, Royal again, just because Switch version. I, yeah. I would agree, but at the same time, then I think about the weird oddity of Soul Hackers 2, and I'm like, I still don't fucking get why Soul Hackers didn't I don't, come to Switch. Soul Hackers is a, is a baffling game that scientists are still working to understand <laughs> on a fundamental <laughs> level. There is no logical explanation for why that game was made or released or released in the way it did, regardless of whether or not I like that game, because I freaking love Soul Hackers 2. I'm just but that imagining like a group, accident. a group of actual scientists sitting around, and just some guy just says, but why the fuck is it 2? <laughs> <laughs> I thought a Persona start with 3. Um, The fact that that was like the first Atlas game as well to get a dedicated PS5 version. Fuck yeah, baby, and they cheaped out on the engine with Unity. Good timing, folks. And also for a game that has a dedicated P5 release, it its base form still forces the loading screens. Uh, <laughs> you can I turn them off. That. They have I don't know, that's the thing. I'm like, how is this game loading so slow on this system? Oh no, it can load in literally like a fourth of a second. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Cool game. Uh, it's a cool I, game. I okay, like that I, game. I think that loading screen option is so much funnier just because of the fact that, like, you can turn it off on the PS4 version as well, because that's where I played it. And, yeah, it makes the game ro load a lot faster on PS4 as well. It's not instant, obviously, but there is just a button in the settings that's like, hey, do you want this game to load faster? Mm -hmm. It's so funny. Uh, cool you, got your, you got your last last one. Uh, what, do, what do I have written down here? Let's see. What's in the depths of my brain um, <laughs> that's what i have in the depths of my brain um <laughs> so i just wrote I, i'm this isn't even a 2024 prediction this is just a manifest it into reality prediction uh it just says jet set radio joker skin <laughs> up top baby <laughs> oh my god i mean i guess knack was busy so they had to give it to the next obvious choice <laughs> um I believe that in the sense of I think all those super games, like you're going to see the Morgana bus in the new Crazy Taxi. Just I was about to it. say, like, I would kill for that. Yes. Uh, but like. The weird thing with it is like, I think the super game costumes, that makes sense. But then also they get the same time. And I'm like, when are we as a society going to move on and force Atlas to do other collab costumes. Cause we can't just keep doing fucking like, honestly, the only yes, other time can. I'm going to get excited seeing Joker come to anything is him coming to Fortnite. If I'm being perfectly honest. Oh yeah, no. 
Uh, one, you're right. <laughs> Two, I, I mean, I'll just take it anytime. Sorry, were, were you gonna say something, Michelle? Before I completely tangent. I don't know. I'd I'd buy it. Yeah. That's it. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So this is a complete tangent, but it's still related. Um, I guess. So why why do they keep insisting on referring to that as their super game? It, what is why? Basically, they use the term super game in lieu of Fortnite. If you look at the way they describe it, it's them just saying, we want our next Fortnite. That's all it's saying. But how does it, that apply to them being like, we're our super game, quote unquote? Because if, because if they say, like because if they say live service game, it's going to scare off all their investors because right now we've been seeing live service games falling off like a fucking brick. Well, no, because so, isn't the, unless I'm wrong, isn't the super game referring to them just doing, like, a ton of different games nope. all at once? No, the super game is the concept of a game that they can make and keep making in perpetuity forever. So the super game function is some of the games they announced in December, but things like Jet Set Radio, things like Crazy Taxi are going to be platforms that can continue to live and grow. Like they've said in the internal doc meetings for Crazy Taxi that this will be a evolving world like Fortnite. That is, you know, I, I'll at least give them credit. That's fascinating to hear. That's a, that's one way to what say are fucking you doing? stupid. Fucking stupid what are you what I doing? I love what are you doing, Sega? I'll, I'll accept it. I am so fascinated. But what are you doing, bro? I love I love video games. They're not making money. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> if you told me in 2018 or 2019 that Crazy Taxi was gonna be the Fortnite killer, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's gonna be killed by Fortnite if that's what that <laughs> fucking word means. <laughs> Uh, man, yeah, I, I'm sure Sega was real fucking happy that Fortnite announced a new fucking uh, driving mode. I'm sure that fucking really got him excited about Crazy Taxi. Sega, um, Sega with the Lego game in their back pocket. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, like, that one, That one's tough. It's just like, listen, man, I, I, ho- I hope one of these fucking hit. I just feel it in my gut that none of these are going to fucking hit. I just find it hilarious that, and I, you know, I understand why, but yeah, in their super game concept, none of those games are Sonic. They just, <laughs> they still won't just give it the money and time. They won't do it. Dude, they, they better, I mean, I, I, I know they had some meetings about it, but like, it's such a fucking embarrassment that like, they basically failed upwards with Sonic Frontiers if they rushed it out. But they marketed it just enough and paid a bunch of fucking toddlers enough to pretend it was great at launch that then the word of mouth made a lot of people go, oh, hey, I should buy it. It's a new 3D Sonic game and it's not completely trash. Sorry, Victor. (laughs) Yeah. But then, like, instead of just keeping supporting that game and then waiting and letting the next one cook, why am I forgetting the the Balan Wonderland people? They hired Uh, the fucking Balan Wonderland people. By the way. squad. (laughs) <laughs> they fucking, yeah, it's literally like, like they hired a bunch of goons who made Balan Wonderland and said, well, I hope you guys don't fuck up our next game. Also, it's and not Balan Wonderland, it uh, it's Balan, <laughs> Balan Wonder World. Yes, oh, man. Balan Wonder World. <laughs> Adam, there's, Adam, I'm going to just like dunk on our, on our friend in this podcast. He won't watch, right? Mm-hmm. There is something so funny to me about me and you co-oping the entirety of mario wonder fucking loving that game having the time of our life for just the entire thing right <laughs> meanwhile like every time our our big sonic friend fan comes in uh and he's just like yeah i'm playing sonic superstars it's it's okay and then he boots up wonder and he's like yeah this is good i don't want to play it <laughs> uh, i'm gonna make fun of him for that is there like the reverse of copium that you would describe that as i'm like trying to think <laughs> i'm just like trying to think about that i'm like that can't be that can't be like something that a mentally stable person would I, say. I mean, I get it. Like he th- this guy is like the biggest Sonic fan I've ever met. So like I get why like he sat through Superstars and he, he is didn't like it. real about the quality of a lot of those games, even if he definitely skews more into liking them. But then it just gets even more sad because he's like, man, 
man, this this game turned out to be the most disappointing, like, 6 to 7 out of 10 I've played. Yeah, and then we got to play Wonder, and I was like, this is, like, borderline game of the year. I love uh, Mario Wonder. Um, I don't know, it's a bit silly. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I had to say about that. Sega's really smart. They should make good Sonic games. Hire, at, hire this man, Sega. Hire this man. Honestly, at this point, Sega should just hire this man because I don't, I don't trust the chefs in that kitchen at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- I mean, I mean, let them cook, but also we, we all know how they cook them, so please don't cook anymore. <laughs> let them cook, but like at least hire a backup chef. <laughs> and it's too bad that they didn't have a development team willing to bend over backwards and make them a really good game. Except they, they they sent them off and never let them make another game. And now they're making and now they're making Penny's Big Breakaway, and I'm excited for that game. That game God, is sick. I can't, the real Sonic Mania too. Finally. Uh, oh, but yes. Uh, I I guess I'll do my. I mean, I'll I can do my final one unless do you have a your your final one you're ready for, or have you already done all four years? I don't remember how many I did, but I do have one more I want to throw for out. It. Um. I, this is I'm going to like I, I've been kind of sheepish because I'm not like one to make definitive statements because I'm a, I'm a little baby. But I'm I'm going to like make baby. I'm going to make my my definitive statement on this one. 2024 is the year that the first thing Atlas is going to do to try and capitalize on a quote unquote P3 spinoff is this will be the year that we get Persona Q1 and 2 HD Q2 now English dub with the new reload cast and because it'll be funny they won't redub Q1. Yippee. Here's here's the joke. <laughs> All of those things you said are right, but <laughs> because the Etrian Odyssey team gets always thrown under the bus somehow by Sega and Atlas, they will make it digital only in the West and it will cost $90. Yes, yeah, so probably you're right. Um I don't know, yeah, I, I think I think now that like P5, you know, is still popular enough that they are justifying spinoffs of that game. P3 Reload is getting a port or P3 Reload is existing and Persona 4 is on platforms and people still talk about it and they still occasionally go, hey, you should buy this game. Basically, all three games that are in that that are in that game are at the peak of their popularity, kind of. So, Yeah. I think this will be when they finally just do both Q games on all platform, or at least Switch. I can't wait till I hit the peak of my popularity. <laughs> We're gonna get I, there. I do, be- I do believe that because like my gut keeps telling me like as much as I want a new Etrian Odyssey game, I'm just like, why has this game not just been ported to a system that'll fucking sell well? Because those mm-hmm. games visually really hold up still. Yeah. Oh yeah, Q2, like they, I'm they going through Q two right now. Nice art stuff phenomenal like please bring it back please let me look at horrifyingly ugly uh yosuke head on monkey body no nah, don't don't diss my man yosuke saurus <laughs> yosuke oh, <laughs> god do there are parts of I, that game that feel like a fever dream looking at you uh molester superhero p oh teacher that's that is sure how that that sure is how that game opens i <laughs> I will say this is my funny anecdote. If you follow me on Twitter, you know that I have a complicated relationship with Persona 4 at this point in my life. Um, so Show us I th- on the doll where Persona 4 touched you. <laughs> I think it's very funny that at this point, uh, I think it's very funny that because uh, I love Q2. I just didn't. I-, I loved what I played of Q2. I just haven't finished it yet. And it is. Not necessarily a coincidence that I stopped playing basically as soon as the P4 cast got introduced. Really? I like, th- okay, I do really like the P4 cast. I love a lot of those characters, but there was just something in me where I was like, man, I, I miss just being with the Phantom Thieves. Like, they're, I they're was here. with my crew, and then they threw Teddy into the mix. <laughs> I don't uh, even, like, I uh, don't even mean this in a mean way. I think I'm, like, the opposite of, like, when I go back to other Persona games, like when I like went back to P3 and P4, I was like, whew, felt like a breath of fresh air to not have a fucking cat dragging along the whole time in the game. I was like, whoo, God, I missed this. I will take Morgana so much over Teddy. 
I like, have you seen like, I forget the name of the artist on Twitter. There's like an artist who like, uh, has done like these little like one shots of like really depressed Japanese retail worker brings Teddy with her everywhere. And it's really funny. I've never seen that. It's like, <laughs> I'll, I'll see if I can ever like find them. It's like her working at retail and she's like, and, Te- and Teddy's just like, I bet like, you did a great job today. Like Masato. And then she's just like, I don't think I can do this anymore. Teddy. And he's like, Oh my God. That's amazing. <laughs> well, I think for my last one, again, not trying to go for the low-hanging fruit, but just the, the ones that are speaking to me. And I'm really proud none of us actually did Persona 6 is happening at E3 2019 or whatever the fuck we were going to say. So good job, gang. Yep. I'm going to be the Debbie Downer, and I'm going to say it. Metaphor is not releasing in 2024. It will get delayed to 2025. Who's with me? No. <laughs> you can't I just can... say no. Okay. I, what, 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 it, what's, but I don't think so. Does it have a current release date slash window? Currently listed as fall 2024. Yeah. As, then of, I... as of the last trailer we saw a month ago. Then I could maybe see it, like, getting pushed back to, like, early 25, but I don't know. Because I don't expect it to get a long delay. I expect it to get that, like, Persona 5 one last, oh, shit, let's get it across the finish line. Because Sega is still trying to release this worldwide. And I think they're going to realize after Yakuza, oh, shit, maybe releasing a bunch of 100-hour games right back to back to back to back isn't really good for the overall quality. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we're also going to just see it with this fall an absolute slew of other games coming out that people just aren't ready for on top of a new system coming out with Nintendo. Because here's my here's my thing. If you're Atlas and you're able to, why not push the release of Metaphor back by three to six months if you can also release it on the Switch 2? Mm-hmm. I just want my games, man. <laughs> Dude, we're going to get so many games. Like, we do not need Metaphor this year. Like, we're already, like, literally, we would be feasting with fucking Overlord Metaphors and Persona 3 Unicorns. Like, we'd be already good with just those two. See, what you don't understand, Spencer, is like, yes, I agree. It is an Overlord. It is an Overlord, sorry. Um, mm-hmm. But, like... I I'll overdose on Atlas content. I'll friggin' I'll take it. I'll die on that. I I think I think here here's my thing as well. Metaphor they they can fuck up. They really shouldn't. And I yeah. think when you go and you look at it like they really want to handle that right. If the fall is even remotely crowded, much like we learned with Tactica, get the fuck out of there. Get the fuck out of there. What are you doing? That's like, look at metaphor and tell me that that's a game that will hold attention in November. I don't know. It very much depends on, I guess, how they pull out that final stretch. I don't see it being like the game in terms of like, there's probably going to be some crazy triple A that's going to drop around that time. But like, I don't know. I can see it still holding a bit more than its niche. And, like, similar to SMT5, like, SMT5 was not the greatest selling game of all time, but it sold, like, pretty well, all things considered. It's one of the best, it's one of the best selling SMT games of all time. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying, like, it still sold, like, a million, if not, like, a couple million. But that was a pretty good fall to release in, and it was a system exclusive, so it had the Nintendo bump. Mm. But again, I, I think the actual context around... I guess what this game is and how it's presenting itself. I think the presentation of what this game is, is much more accessible to the average audience than like Shin Megami Tensei. Mm. Like you should say, you should say it the way review tech USA says it. <laughs> what the <laughs> heck do they do? Shin Megami Tensei. Oh, thank you. Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Yeah, what has Hurricane Katrina ever done for us? They never released Kingdom Hearts 4. <laughs> Dude, what if Kingdom Hearts 4 comes out this year? What are you guys going to do if that happens? Probably, not probably won't. Play it. Probably, 
Yeah, probably not much. I, I, I have the all-in-one collection. I haven't played it yet. What's wrong with you guys? Well, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Well, okay, my thing... My thing is I want to get back, because I played a bit of KH1. My thing is that using my PS4 is a miserable experience. Uh, but my brother got a PS5 for Christmas, so I can, like, play my PS4 games in a form that I don't want to hate. See, I, I appreciate Kingdom Hearts at a very specific distance. I appreciate the sheer passion that the fans have for that game, like those games, and the emotions it brings in them and the sheer passion. But for most of those games outside of like KH2 is fun and I find Dream Drop Distance fun. Uh, and I've played a very little amount of KH3. Otherwise, you will find me hard pressed being like, yeah, I'm going to have fun by sitting down and playing Kingdom Hearts. Those yeah, games are miserable to play for me. Yeah, Spencer, you all want to know Adam like when I first met him when we were like 16 and he was, and he was the one of those die hard, like kingdom hearts, one of the worst written things I've ever seen in my life. He, he was that guy for a while. Do you I don't want to talk about do where I'm at with like, that right now. It's a very silly, complicated mess. Do you guys just like hurting me? Like, don't you know, kingdom hearts is like one of my favorite series of all time. I'm sure I'll love kingdom hearts when I play it. I own it. So I was going to say, there's no, I, yeah, I, I Adam, I feel like pretty confident. Be like, yeah, he probably will still not like it. I feel like that's way up your alley. I think, I think it is. It wouldn't be genuine of me to say I don't like Kingdom Hearts. It would just be overstating it to say I am a fan of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> you look like the kind of guy who would find it funny to call it Kingdom Farts. True. That, that, I, you would do that. I, was, <laughs> I guess the best way to put it is I respect the spirit of kingdom hearts like smash bros yes i love spirits <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do in fact love these spirit fights for the kingdom right, hearts I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna give bonus points to whoever can answer this first no cheating roxas great answer jesse mccarthy would have been the correct answer all right who can answer who can answer this first what amiibo is coming out on friday is are there any amiibos coming out other than Sora? Yeah, it's there coming. Is, there's a weird one. There's it's like coming um, out on Friday. No, don't look it up. You gotta guess. No, yeah, there's like a one that like was weirdly delayed, and I'm trying to remember what it was. It's um, um oh crap, what, which one was it? I'm actually I'm gonna pull up the roster. I'm not gonna look it up. Uh, are they? Is now the time for Sephiroth? Nope, Sephiroth's already been out. Sephiroth came okay. out over a year ago. Yeah, oh, freaking no man. I, I got Joker and stopped paying attention. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. It's based on a Nintendo. It is based on a very popular Nintendo IP. A JRPG, in fact. Yeah, I was going to say, is it Pyra and Mithra? Those came out last year. Oh, it's, right. It's uh, Noah and whoever. Right. Your name, right? Isn't that the one coming out? Yeah, it's the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 double pack. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. You guys remember when Amiibo were like twelve ninety nine? <laughs> And then Amiibo became, a, for no reason at all, like fifteen ninety nine. How much do you think a double this double pack is MSRPing at? I don't know. They sold me like Zelda 30, with a loft 30, ring for like $30. 30, 40. 40. 40 yeah, that sounds two. right. Dude, I mean, because they I, know the Xenoblade 3 fans will buy it. Yeah. Like, okay, listen. I love... I love Nintendo's Amiibos because they're dumb, stupid toys. But, like, did you guys buy the Ganon and Zelda one for Tears of the Kingdom? No, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't buy. I, I didn't buy Tears the of the Kingdom. Link one. That, <laughs> just say no next time, Ozzy. Just say no. <laughs> I like his cool, silly hand. Okay. It's true. I do like the silly hand. So here's the funny thing: if you look up both of those amiibo, if you can look it up on like the internet, they're both incredibly detailed. They come in literally the exact same size box. Ganon is four dollars more expensive for no reason. They no, just gave no him. Hip, they just gave him. No. Hip tax so he's a 20 dollar amiibo no, they, they, for no reason they no, knew, no, no. no they, no they knew the gays would show up don't I, I, was, I was gonna say unlike the link amiibo people they know that people are gonna use the ganon amiibo oh no <laughs> i just say that okay it came, it came with a free mason jar for reasons uh, so I, that was a, a, that was an awful that was an awful discussion about amiibo 
that does remind me of like my favorite thing. Oh, no. I no, it's not. It's not about. It's about Ganon, but not in that regard. Uh, <laughs> I I just loved like yeah, like some like the interviews and like behind the scenes stuff about Tears of the Kingdom. There, like the 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 artist slash designer who's just like always worked on Ganondorf. Like they love Ganon, and basically. Uh, with Tears of the Kingdom, they basically just told that artist, like, you know what, go nuts, do whatever you want with Ganondorf, and their eyes just lit up, apparently, and I think that's amazing. And then they gave us, like, one of the best Ganondorf designs in the history of humanity. Oh, I, mean, no, I, I mean, I believe it. It's great. I love it. So we've got our uh, quick round of questions because uh, we're, we're doing a great job of failing at doing this in less than uh, two hours. But I think I believe in our ability to do this. So who's ready? Okay. All right. Let's pull up the ones from Facebook first. So first one would be Sebastian Gomez says or Gomez says, what would be your dream announcement for Atlas in 2024? So not like a prediction like you think is going to come true. What's your like dream? Oh my God, get hype Gatorade moment. No. Yeah. No, no one's ever taking strikers two away from me. I I just want. It. Yeah. I just want strikers two. That's all. That's always been my thing because like they I, should, they should call it persona five, three instead of strikers two. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I, I would love strikers two just cause like, I think if they want to make the, if they want to make the persona five game, that would be persona fives finale. That strikers two, I think would just be great for the, but also, if they do Strikers 2, can they actually, like, add arcade elements like a normal friggin' moose? So, like, just give me more to play. I want to play that game for, like, a thousand hours. That is a really good one. Uh, Ozzy, what about you? What's your what's your dream, uh, r- your dream unrealistic prediction? Uh, it, it's that one, but if I need to come up with another Unreal Engine prediction, um, and I want the Persona 6. Um, I don't care if there's too many games releasing, just, I don't know. It's my dream. <laughs> I get to pick the game. This is a toughie. I'm going to go, my my get hype moment, and I know it's not going to happen, but that's why it's a dream announcement. The Soul Hackers 2 team announces their project releasing in 2024. Mm-hmm. Well, it probably won't be releasing in 2024, but we'll get revealed in 2024. Fuck expectations. Tokyo Mirage Sessions 2 is real. And this time, no. this time, because it's a sequel, they're doing another crossover. It will be a crossover between Atlas Elements, Fire Emblem, and K-pop, just because. Why not? Just because F you, that's why. Can I also just get like a like a random inclusion of like Nia or not Nia um Mio from Xenoblade Three? Yeah, them too. <laughs> them too. With the flute, flute mandatory. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Next question comes from Stephen Yip. I would love a Devil Survivor Three announcement. P5 Tactica wasn't scratching that itch for me personally. I completely agree. I originally used to say I don't know who I would want to make it, but I will say for Tactica being P Studio's first attempt at a tactics RPG. It's a really good tactics game. It's a well it's also it's a very good first one. Yeah. Because like it's this is not a genre that every Tom Dick and Harry Sue can make with a Rabbids IP license. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think there's a team out there who could do it. I just don't think the P team is going to get the budget to do it. Although, according to fucking Mr. NeoGaff over here, I guess they're making fucking party games. So who knows what they're going to do with their time and, and money and stuff. So uh, I know I know you two are, uh, haven't quelched yourself into the world of Devil Survivor, but does it... Uh, has that seen... Well, yeah. I mean, but like, ha- have you like really... Uh, have you really... Have you really eaten from the the crust of the Devil Survivors? Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I haven't played two, but like I've gotten like seventy, eighty percent of the way through the first game like a while back, which I should really actually finish that game, but it's phenomenal. So yeah, Devil Survivor three would be sick. I doubt it. I do not see that happening. At least this year, maybe like an announcement next year. But I cannot see that happening this year. 
Here we go. Uh, Sabrina says, what are the odds we'll get Fez DLC for P3R? I don't want to manifest that into reality. I, I don't how, want how, any how more about, How about this? DLC. Since we did talk about like the likeliness of it earlier, let's change the question. What are all of our reactions if Fez is announced as getting added to Royal? Whether it be DLC, a free update, whatever. We we just watched the trailer. It is literally just the answer in, in HD. How would we react? I would look at it and go, I'll give it a chance. I'm not, not excited, but I'm not jumping off of my seats. But I, I'd be as middle of the ground as one could be. Well, well, to answer the question as you put it, yes, if if FES content was added to Persona 5 Royal, I would <laughs> be like, yo, that's crazy, and immediately see what weird amalgamation they just created. Now, if it was added to P3 Reload, I would laugh and then probably play it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, my thing is, like... Okay, my thing is, like, I mean, I would probably buy it because it's what i do but like if we got persona 3 re- well if we got persona 3 reload re-release you know persona 3 reload fes like as a standalone game i would think that's very stupid and i'd hate it um that being said if they do dlc i will begrudgingly accept it and be like yeah that, that's fine this game's already really freaking long i like that's the thing like I understand the disappointment, but I also understand the creative and, like, management angle of only adapting the main part of P3. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I get it. The female protagonist would take a lot of work. I I don't I don't blame them for skipping it, even if everyone I, I think it's funny whenever I saw people being like, we only want a remake for, like, the definitive version of P3. I'm like, no, you didn't. Everyone just wanted this game in HD. Don't lie to me. Yeah, that's uh, also, like, I'm not, I still champion the fact that I think people asking for a remake as definitive versions of games is a very weird, dumb way to look at art. You're right. We like, do, I, need, a, I'm excited we, we do for need a definitive edition of Octopath Traveler 2. That base game sucks ass. We need a, oh. we need a royal version of Octo 2. That's Spencer, true. the fire's getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, even even as much as I'm excited for Reload and expect to like it more than original P3, it's never going to replace original P3. Even if people are going to be like, ah, don't touch it, don't bother. It is still its own original work of art. It still will always have that unique identity to it. It doesn't matter how much Reload perfectly captures and has all the features of the original. It's The original is still there. And yeah, it was I, created I, I in think, that time, I in think, that context. What was it you specifically said when playing uh, Vanilla P3? I think you said they can take they can take my RPG, but they'll never take my 2005 trans jokes, right? What, wasn't that what you said exactly, word for <laughs> word? We'll see. I, mean, I I guess my other thing with like P3's like con extra content, like from like both remakes, is like my thing is I'm like yeah, obviously the remake can make both of these things better. I like that's obviously true but my thing is I'm like anything I want to get out of the answer is on YouTube and if I if I were to beat Persona 3 Reload and was like man I want to play this game again but with a female protagonist that portable re- remaster isn't great but it goes on sale for like two dollars pretty often so I'll just get it then like whatever man like, I, I, need don't, to see, I don't I need to see what fucking Peruvian steam sales you're looking at <laughs> I mean, it, it goes on sale for, like, at least half off pretty often. Like I, I see that game on sale constantly for, like, 15 bucks, I'm gonna be real. Yeah, like, it's not hard to find P3P and P4G on sale on Steam really often. Like, I, I got I got Strikers for 20 so. Never forget, remember when Strikers and P- 13 Sentinels was getting Uber clearance to GameStop, and I just bought 9 million copies because they were $5 a piece new? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Um, let me see here. We had another one here on the Facebooks. Where did you disappear to? Here we go. Uh, Matthew Thompson said, Devil Survivor 3 is on the top of my wish list personally, as well as a new spinoff entry with similar vibes to Strange Journey with dark and gritty mysterious vibes. I cannot agree more. 
Uh, Matt Wick says, any plans for DDS 1 or 2 in the foreseeable future? I think the fact that of all of our predictions and none of them included port more old PS2 games <laughs> might be the answer, but also we're just a bunch of goofy Westerners, so I would love to be wrong and see those get ported. My gut tells me no, there's no chance. Do you think there's any world where they would port Rido? Because I really don't see it happening. Oh, dude, Rido, Rido is the least likely out of all of them. Like, DDS, at least, is, like, less controversial, whereas, like... Yeah, they no, have Rido, to, that's have, not gonna happen. I think Rido will happen eventually. I just think, like, in a world where you have the Rido games versus DDS, DDS is the more... I get as weird as this is to say about a cannibalistic JRPG duology, the more mainstreamable version of the two. Well, cause I also like to account for the fact that like, in terms of, I guess a lot of like imagery and stuff like in Rido, just like the present day, like Rido doesn't even have a costume in the new release of Royal because of like censorship stuff. Dude, with, that's think... it's shit like that. That legit makes me so mad that like, I hate, that the PS4 version is the only one to have the Rido costumes. Yeah. I hate, I, I hate I, that I, shit I, so much. That's I, so I mod, stupid. I modded on Steam. Someone did make a mod for it. So it exists technically on Steam. Just says, just says no China. That's the no China mod. <laughs> your social, your social's credit score went down 13 points for downloading that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. We got a couple last ones from the YouTube comments. Kyrian Buckley, hot take, I predict no Persona 6 announcement this year. I don't agree with that, just because I feel like Ozzy's got to make that 20 bucks back eventually. Yeah, he, he's going to gonna 40, make it. I, I think we can double, triple or nothing it to uh, 80. Yep. Yeah, but I, 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 feel, <laughs> I feel like no matter when this game gets announced, I've, I've always felt this way about P6. It's going to have an awful... Not awful. It's going to have an unsatisfying reveal. I'd be shocked if it gets revealed in a way like where we saw a Tactica and R, where it's like, holy shit, the game's out in nine months, let's go. I still think that game's more farther off than people would expect. I'd love to be wrong, but especially with how much stuff P Studio has been making, because remember, they made Tactica. They made Reload, like, they've been working on a lot of stuff, and obviously they've been working on Persona 6 as well, but it's like, I'd, I'd be shocked if, I, if, if, they're, if they're at least 12 months out from that game. I'd be incredibly I, shocked. And I, I've always, like, been saying, like, I think, I, I think more and more people need reality checks on how long video games take to be made so that they aren't cyberpunk. Um, yeah. Because, like... Uh, like that's how I always feel whenever like I see people being like, "Man, where's Prime 4? I'm like, "Yeah, it's been a hot minute, but given that game restarted development, I think that just should tell you how long it takes to make triple A video games." Yeah. I also um this is less of a serious note. This is just me <laughs> being stupid. I was going to say that P6 is absolutely getting revealed where it's just going to be a stock PNG of that image of all the protagonists standing in front of that graffiti wall. And it's just going to very slowly for like five <laughs> minutes, zoom in on that green paint bucket. And then just, <laughs> and then just aerial font, the number six appears over it. <laughs> and, and, and with, and with windows movie maker transition. Oh hell yeah. They, I, w- I wasn't into the windows. Movie maker. Now you got me. Six chairs, six chairs. Come on. I do. You are you are emancipation. One slave. Persona six. <laughs> um. Let's see. Hollow J with an interesting one. Do you want? Sorry. Do you think we'll get any SMT manga? So we've been we're actually surprisingly getting close now to every Persona manga having gotten a English release. So. Mm-hmm. We've never had any completed series translated in the West. The closest we ever had, we got SMT Con, but we only ever got two issues of it by Tokyo Pop. I could see us maybe getting the SMT4 mangas. There was one for Law, and then there was one for Chaos. Mm-hmm. It's it's hard to say though, because like I feel like. Those, it's weird. We're we're in an era where manga is more popular than it's ever been, which is wild to say in the last like 30 plus years. Mm. But 
I'm not sure who would do it, and we would kind of need like a focus behind it. I'll make it. Uh, yeah, nice. sure. We'll get we'll get his fucking we'll get his fucking webtoon uh, published. Why why not? Let's go. Um, but like I think there's a lot of them out there that I would still love to see. I feel like the SMT4 one would be my go-to. If by some miracle we actually got someone to finish SMT Con, that would be cool. Like it has been translated into other uh, countries before, and even other stuff. Like there's a Catherine manga which is actually pretty cool as well. Like mm-hmm. I would enjoy seeing stuff like that. I just don't know which one I'd want to rally behind. Like the one for Strange Journey is really good, but it's just really, really tough. Like, are, are there any ones that kind of stick out to you guys of like Atlas related manga that you would want to see localized? We haven't gotten. Hmm. I don't know. I've been reading, I've been reading bloom into you. <laughs> Is that about a Australian, uh, waiter, uh, waiter and waitress, uh, love, love at, uh, Outback steakhouse or no, it's your, Yur- no, it's Yuri. Oh, Yuri on ice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I don't have anything specific in there, so I'm going to follow a similar note. Can I get a uh, One Piece Persona 5 crossover? Sure. Why haven't we gotten that? Fucking One Piece collabs with everything. Because because One Piece isn't trying to kill the mobile game. They've spent $10 trillion advertising for the last, <laughs> like, couple months. They won't stop. Leave me alone. I'm not buying. I'm not downloading your game. Um, I'm sure it exists somewhere. No, nope. Un- unfortunately, the only thing that shows up when I look up Persona One Piece is Perona. I'll take it. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's about it. There was never any uh, official crossover. I'll give it. I'll give it time. I'm sure they can find a way. Oh, here you go, Ozzy. Here's the Persona crossover One Piece Odyssey. It's basically Baby's first Persona Five. <laughs> we take what we can get we do uh i mean i I always think of one piece odyssey as ilka after getting absolutely bullied into the ground for making brilliant diamond and shining pearl we're like all right guys we're gonna show you that we can at least make a good rpg and then they made one piece odyssey Mm. uh hey four one four two six says atlas puts metaphor in sony's next big game showcase and a huge nintendo rpg just like how p3 reload is set b- in between rebirth and yakuza 8 that is kind of interesting look like i i wonder will atlas finally will atlas finally be smart and like actually put release timing into consideration because i always feel like especially kind of like what we talked about with um sonic i feel like they're just so stubborn they don't ever want to do it but weirdly enough like whereas last year we knew a bunch of games that were coming out i think we know a lot of games that are coming out this year we just don't know when the fuck they're coming out yeah uh here's a here's a more interesting one swift skyver says metacritic score predictions for unicorn overload metaphor and p3r ozzy i'll let you go first all right so unicorn overlord i'm seeing critic scores being fair well i I can still even see for critics that still being in like a weird oh yeah yeah we're only we're only predicting critics we're not going to do fan predictions so i'm like I, i can still see that being in a weird niche so honestly even though i'm expecting to love that game i could expect that being like an 80 um, reload is probably going to be like ninety at least, maybe like at a ninety. At least, at least, at least the confidence. I'm, I'm, I'm yes. And metaphor, metaphor. I have no idea, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pull up a number randomizer. One second. All right. While he's doing that, um, unicorn, I think could be like unicorn. I'll give somewhere like. Mid 80s. That's about where 13 Sentinels sits. Um, I could imagine it being something like that. I'm gonna say Persona 3 Reload will specifically be a 94, uh, making it the second highest rated Persona game, uh, between Persona 5 Royal and Persona 5. Woo! De- dead center. Which side note, uh, looking at this Metacritic, uh, is ruining my brain. Uh, Adam, did you know that on Metacritic, Tactica only has two more points than Dancing? 
that's fascinating. Anyways, I'm finally pulling up my metaphor card of it getting a 46. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do you one better and hit you with a 47. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Metaphor. Daring po- today, aren't we? <laughs> Metaphor. Meta- Meta- Metaphor apparently launched in such a rough state, Cyberpunk had to issue an apology for its behalf. I'll, Metaphor I'll, had a rough transition into 3D. I'll, I'll, I'll throw out, <laughs> God damn it, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'll, I'll, throw, I'll throw out an 88 for Metaphor. I don't okay. think it's going to hit those Persona 90s quite, partly just by not having, I don't know, the legacy, I guess. But I don't know. I think like, where's the cat? Yeah. Where's that's, that's, the cat? That's what I'm always asking. This is why I didn't finish Kingdom Hearts. Um, there's a lot of cats in Kingdom Hearts. That's definitely not true. <laughs> um, I didn't I'm see gonna any. go over first. I'm gonna say Metaphor will average in the low 80s. I'm gonna say Metaphor will be controversially at an 81. P3R is going to be unexpectedly high because all the reviewers who who got picked for it have already a big persona boner because a lot of outlets just like giving persona to the persona people. So persona five, hold on. I got, I got to check this one exactly just cause I like to be, uh, I, I like to tempt fate. So if I bro is a 95 right now, if that's what you're looking for, I know, but I got to see which one is the highest. Cause there's all the different platforms. Bullshit. Yeah, I think it's switch, Switch is like a 98 or some shit. No on switch. It's, uh, you okay, it's a, it's a 94 on Switch. Yeah, PS4 is high. Persona, so. th- yeah, Persona 3 Royal will be a 94. It'll be one point lower than Royal, but way higher than it should be. And then sorry, I, Lord... I, sorry, I'm looking at I'm looking at the Persona 5 Royal reviews on Metacritic. I like that Xbox One is still to be determined. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I bought a copy, but I also bought a copy. Oh fuck, I have two copies of that game, don't I? Do I? Why the fuck do I have two copies of that game? Oh, because this fucking Steelbook. <laughs> Why did I buy two copies of that goddamn game? Thanks, oh, Steelbooks. Um, Unicorn Overload will be at an 86, making it the highest reviewed Vanillaware game, but only by one point over 13 Sentinels. Mm-hmm. Is my guess. Uh, X Yumi says, I doubt that this will happen, but I'd very much like to see a digital Devil Saga remaster. You and me both. Insert uh, Squidward meme here. Uh, Minato Arisato. God, that one always messes with me. Not really game related, but what are the odds the original Megami Tensei novels are ever localized with the original P4 manga getting P? Sorry, the original P4 Arena manga getting an English release. Uh, there is some sort of community push for publishers to localize them. Novels is keep a dreaming, harder buddy. one. <laughs> keep dreaming. Keep, Not in a negative never, way, just keep Which, which keep is open. like a shame, because like, light novels have been getting also really, really popular. Also, if we couldn't... I don't know. It's like, I think back to how we couldn't even get the other three Quantum Devil Saga ones, it makes me extra certain that we probably won't get the original digital Devil Sagas, but I'd, I'd love to be wrong. Please mm. for be wrong and, and localize them. I just know no one's going to do it because it's going to take a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. And why, all the good, why are all the good names taken? Says, as a queer person who likes Atlas games, but has to deal with Persona games just being straight up queer phobic at times, I'm worried about future games. Do you think there's a chance Metaphor might have also have a problem because of the Persona staff that is involved in working on it? Also, do you think that some of the Persona staff who went uh, to Metaphor... Oh, sorry. Also, do you think because some of the Persona staff who went to Metaphor that Persona 6 might finally be an- might finally not have anti-queer stuff? What do we think? Um. So I'll that's hard. That's like hard to say. And like because like I don't know these people. So like I don't know who specifically on the staff hates trans people. Um. But like to give like some credit. Uh, Persona 5 Tactica had a scene where you got to fantasize about marrying Ryuji and not once did it insult you, and I appreciated that greatly. Mm. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll say that at the very least. And I will also say that Catherine and Persona 4 try 
they don't succeed sometimes, especially Persona 4, but they try to tell queer stories. So Atlas for me is always such a weird... I have a lot of very bizarre, conflicting feelings on the way that Atlas does those things as, like, a queer person myself. Um, And I will also add that, like, when it comes to Persona 5... Persona 5 obviously has the gay stereotypes in it, but it is also a game that spoke to me on a deep level as a queer person. So Atlas has a very odd track record for that with me. My So I guess, like, to give my answer to that, I'm like, I don't friggin' know for metaphor... Um, we can hope for the best. Yeah, that's kind of what I that's kind of what I can say. I have I have no strong feelings one way or the other, basically, on what Atlas will do in regards to actually trying to write a goddamn gay person right. Well, because that's the thing is, from what I remember about what they've shown and said about metaphor is the like kind of way they're they've discussed, I guess, like the oppression in the world that's going yeah. on in metaphor. It very much sounds like a some like clear parallels to a lot of like queer experiences, meaning this could either be their chance to really, you know, prop that up and be better in a modern era or have the funniest set of mixed messages that is also very sad to see in the same game. See, that's the fun thing about Persona 5 is that Persona 5 does that, too. Yep. What a cool game. Man. Man, I sure hope there. I sure hope there aren't any bad scenes in uh, Persona Five about gay people that eventually get transitioned over to the drag community. That sure had been awkward. <laughs> okay, I, actually, I'll say this. I'll give you a definitive yes or no. Did Persona Three Reload cut the transphobic bit? Yes or no? I'll I'll tell you right now, prediction wise, no. It is still in there, but there's an asterisk. It's in the Japanese version where they only were allowed to cut it out in the English version. Where, yeah, where I, they, I had, they had to that. translate it differently. Yeah, I could imagine. Well, yeah, because like, if you guys remember, we we got a different version of it in Royal. In yeah, Japan, it's still completely the fucking same. Yeah, no, yeah. And again, just got to hope okay. for the best. Here, you guys don't have to answer this. I am morbidly curious of where you guys lie. And community, feel free to answer this one as well if you want. Do we expect it to change as one question for the, the, the beach scene for Persona 3? How about the here, – here's this. Should it change? You personally, your own opinion, do you think that scene either needs to be removed, changed, or altered in any way, shape, or form? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, then here's the thing. Guy at Atlas who keeps it in, when it's included, because you know then this, this conversation is going to get brought up – well, it's a remake of the original story, so they had to keep the original story in there. So what what would you tell the people who are like, well, you got to keep the original everything in there? This game's getting rewritten in so many different places with so much shit getting added. If they don't remove the one thing in P3R that's, like, blatantly bigoted, then, then fuck you. That's Here, the thing, like, the, like I said before, where it's original P3 cannot be replaced. It's its own unique work of art. That also means that Reload has every excuse to do something different and it is i in my opinion just as accountable for what it does include if that is worthy of criticism in a modern context like it was worthy it, of criticism then it's definitely worthy now yeah th- th- this isn't persona 4 golden just being the same game but now on steam i think with it being a remake i would say this if i was involved in any process of this which god fucking knows that'll never happen I think you can keep the basis of who they run into on the beach the same. I think you can update how the characters respond to it. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. And and that will change it eventually, because my whole thing with this is I don't want people to think, oh, we can't have gay or trans people in Atlas games. They're just going to be written badly. So let's erase them from that world. Let's have those people in that world without making it be, oh, dang, look who's here. No, yeah, if they have a way to translate that from negative representation to, yes, to (laughs) to positive representation, that's like the ideal scenario. Of course, that all happening. Yeah, of course, that also involves not making the trans person the predator in that scene. Yes. 
Uh, I don't think they were. Were they originally? No, they were originally voiced. I was just trying to think of like in like really dystopian, bizarro world. We just get like even like really like low hanging fruit joke of just like it's now just someone with a really husky deep voice, but the exact same character design. <laughs> Mm. it's like thank you thank you very progressive persona 3 reload i appreciate you um i'll i'll be interested to see what they do with it uh i think the the beat scene in persona 3 is definitely not as infamous as some of like the persona 4 stuff so i'd be curious because i i've always felt per Persona 3 is at least one dumb scene that you yes, can... Yes, it's, fast, a, it's that you, really that, easy to forget it and move on, whereas, yeah, like, same goes P4, for P5. P4, P4 has enough scenes that happen that I understand some people kind of holding it against it, whereas P5... I, I also think the, the big thing that gets me with P4 as well is it's not just interaction with random NPC. It will be core interactions with the main cast in, like, major story segment and it's like yeah. okay guys yeah this isn't some unnamed gooner this is this is <laughs> one of your this protagon- is a named gooner named yeah Shiyoshi. yeah no this th- this is this is kanji constantly being berated by his party for the entire fucking game and 12 spinoffs i hate persona 4 golden i love persona 4 golden I love that whole cast. Um, last question, not really a question, but Noctone ended up asking us this on the Discord. Will Persona 3 Reload leak in its entirety before the entire release date? I will say this. Some fucking dumb dumb will post all of it on YouTube before it even gets publicly available. That's for sure. I don't think I don't think the tactical thing is going to happen again. No. Oh no, dude! Literally, like I know a little bit about that. Like that, the story behind that is so funny. But like the reason that happened was so control. Like it was so stoppable. It's mm-hmm. actually fucking laughable. But like, no, yeah, literally, they made a company mandate to stop that from ever. I forgot about tactical releasing early because that was like what almost three weeks ahead of time. Yep. That was that was fucking insane. <laughs> that was actually wild. I forgot about that. My gosh. Uh, Ozzy, what about you? Will will any aspect of P P three R leak? Um, I'm gonna hope for my own sanity. No. <laughs> good, good guess. Do I believe that hope? Also, maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, hey. We're really fucking late and definitely over two hours, but hey, we did it. Thank you. uh, Thanks, both of you, for coming on the show and uh, being here for so long with us. Uh, We're going to start wrapping up, but I I at least just wanted to thank you guys for predicting and talking. Remember when we were like, oh, dude, I bet we can wrap this up in a cool 90 minutes. Never happens. Never happens. We all hate each other so much we have to talk to each other longer. That's the problem. Mm. Um, But yeah, so... I want to at least give you guys a chance. So, uh, Senoris, if you want to go first, where do you want people to find you and where can people find you? So, uh, I am. So right now I'm not doing a ton on the internet. Um, I am on Twitter still. Uh, I am my, my old, since, since last time I was on the podcast, my account got nuked. Um, so I am now at revived Senorish. Um, Welcome to the club. Yep. Yes. I'm now at revived Senorish on Twitter. Uh, I tweet about games and anime and stuff I enjoy. I retweet art, and I have a media thread going right now if you want to see what I'm doing this year. It's got Sonic Generations on it. Um, I also have at Sophia Persona, my Persona gimmick account, where I tweet the same gif every week. It's the best Um, gimmick account. Thank you. Um... Beyond that, I have a Twitch and YouTube. No promises on when or if that would ever happen. So my what I will say about that for the time being is follow me on Twitter, and if I ever make something interesting, it will be there. All right, and Ozzy, where can people find you online, and uh, when will your next video about One Piece release? So... <laughs> You could find me at Revived Oziak on Twitter or just Oziak on YouTube when I'll hopefully upload this month that video mm. that's pr- basically done. 
I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Right now, we're recording this a week ahead of time. When it, most people will hear this, like patrons will hear this, like as of the day after we're recording. But if you can get this up by next week, you could hypothetically have people listening to this and then go and listen to that four-hour discussion video. Yep. I doubt it, but I'll hope and try. Um, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, I've got some other scripted stuff coming, and we can hope for the best with all that as well. Uh, hopefully, I I constantly pray for the day when I've got the time for it. Hopefully, the Shido video is going to happen sooner than later. Um, want to actually do one another one of those palace reviews, and then I guess to plug my extra random side project right now, I guess you could find me on the Steam Workshop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, baby. Me too. Yeah, me too. I'm credited. I, <laughs> Yeah, because I randomly just woke up one day and I'm like, okay, I guess time to make a bunch of Binding of Isaac Four Souls cards themed around Persona 5. So if that weird niche idea interests you, you can find me posting about that. And I've already got like 80 something cards online that you can play on Tabletop Simulator. So yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to check real quick. Kids. Most popular this week. Uh, no, it's, it. it's still buried underneath FNAF Uno. <laughs> But we're getting there. We'll get there. Yeah. Uh. Persona. Yeah. So the the Persona Five. Uh. Binding of Isaac Four Souls unofficial expansion, which Adam did most of the work on, and I helped with ideas, and I gave him the original concept. So that's how you know it's good. Yippee! It made it to the front page of the workshop, which was awesome. So th- th- if you if you're watching this and you downloaded it, thank you. Yeah. And everyone listening to this, if you enjoy this show and would like to get a, a little bit early, just like all the lovely, lovely supporters over on Patreon, you can support us at patreon.com slash SMTN. Uh, until the day I ever stop being scared and learn how to make and sign up a YouTube membership page, this is the best way to support us. You can go to patreon.com slash SMTN, donate as little as a dollar a month. You can get the show early, have access to exclusive giveaways, and also if you donate five dollars or more a month, you can be an executive producer just like Budweiser Tall Cans, Carlos Hernandez, Contraband, Cross Renren, Gorosero, Mirth Mouser, Patrick Dissart, Preacher's Games, Solaire. Thank you all so much for being patrons. Always appreciate it. And everyone who just donates at any level it is always super, super appreciated. Uh, hopefully the extra effort of getting the shows out weekly and also early for patrons is noted. Um, always looking forward to trying new stuff on the show. Uh, goal is to try and get a special interview set up before the end of January. So fingers crossed that can still happen. Always fun trying to get schedules lined up with everything, especially right now. But uh, to our special guests, Senor Shin Ozzy, thank you so much for coming on and talking with me for way too long. Thank you for having us. Mm-hmm. And uh, everyone for listening, thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Go play Octopath Traveler 2. Go Please play, play Persona 5 Tactica. Play and, Hi-Fi uh, Rush. Play Good Hi-Fi game. Rush all play at the same Alan time. Play Alan Wake 2. Nope. Well, you can, wait till, you, you can wait till physical on that one. You don't gotta no, you can't. <laughs> you don't got to buy it right now. Mm. Unless you want to play as Alan Wake in Fortnite, you can wait. Mm. <laughs> you can wake. You can Alan Wake. Oh, my God. Uh, it was bye. God, goodbye. Dude, I was about to, I was, no, we can't say goodbye yet because now you put mm. it in my head. Did you guys see that tweet today of the guy who modded Alan Wake into Yakuza 8? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And then the director of Alan Wake found it and said, oh, my God, this is fantastic. No, it's amazing. Uh, what was it? The, 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 the tweet was, if Alan Wake stopped writing horror for one day, <laughs> it just showed him, like, <laughs> living it up in Hawaii. And I'm like, damn, you're not wrong. If you think about Alan Wake, like, all of that dude's problems would have stopped if he just stopped fucking writing. Yeah. <laughs> well, everybody, I've got to go find my wife in the darkness, so wish me luck, and I will see you next week. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye.